do it again this week against Montana State. Number two special teams. Last year, North Dakota led the nation in blocked kicks. They've already got five this year. Watch out for that this afternoon. And number three, swag. Confidence. Have a little swag, North Dakota. You just beat Montana last week. Who says you can't knock off both of the Montana schools in back-to-back -back weeks? Now for Montana State, running back Cody Kirk. He's been banged up the past couple weeks with a hamstring injury, but look for him to have a big, effective game to make it third and manageable for Denarius McGee and company. Number two, no turnovers. I probably sound like a broken record, but it's true. Montana State has committed 11 turnovers combined the past three games. And number three, defensive line. Brad Daly, Caleb Shrive by Zach Minner. They got to put pressure on the QB to make it a very long day for Braden Hanson. So those are your Billings Hotel and Convention Center keys to the game. North Dakota and Montana State next. A little rain and or snow in the Gallatin Valley this afternoon. Sounds like perfect football weather, Mike. Boy, it sure does, Chris. And as you talked about, you got to love the matchup. And we're going to see it right out of the box. Montana State wins the toss and defers. So it will be that explosive North Dakota offense on the field first to face the stingiest conference uh, defense in Montana State. Greg Wilson is the referee. The umpire is Butterfield. The head lineman is Brett Shaw. And Montana State opting to go on defense to start the game. A, a bit of an interesting call there as they're going to put uh, North Dakota on the field offensively. That unit, of course, putting up over 700 yards of total offense last week against Montana. We talked about it in the pregame. Big Sky records falling <laughs> left and right. It was Allen. just an amazing performance. You just, I think, uh, Greg Harden, the receiver for North Dakota, talked about it as being video game like numbers. And speaking of which, Harden will take a knee in the back of the end zone. It'll come out to the 25 yard line, and North Dakota will have the football to start the game. And boy, North Dakota's schedule, Mike, we. You and I were visiting about this earlier. I mean, it has been brutal. Yeah, uh, welcome to the big sky. They start <laughs> off Sac State at Sac State. They come back with Cal Poly at Eastern Washington, host NAU, and then they host Montana. So they've had all the big conference leaders already. Braden Hansen uh, starts at quarterback. He's the guy that had the huge numbers last week. And that was his first game in which he started and finished that game. North Dakota operates out of the gun on first down. Little flip out there, and let's take a look at the Western States insurance starting lineups this afternoon. The offensive line over there on the right side, Denai, Gilson, McGurin is the center, Anderson, and Lynch is the left tackle. Miller, Harden, Jackson, Magstaff, and Wisthoff are the backs and receivers for North Dakota as it is second and 10 from the 25. The Wait. defensive line, Daly and Minter to head up that front four for Montana State on second down. Just underway opening quarter. This time North Dakota stays on the ground. Some running room up over the 30 yard line. Nice run by Jake Miller. And the linebacking core for Montana State. And it's a good one. Moe Akiola, Owens and Moore. And in the backfield it's Jones, Fuller, Bethley and Deontay Flowers part of the unit that ranks number one in total defense in the Big Sky Conference. Gain of five on the play brings up third and five. Third and five, Montana State's defense has been the best in the league on third down, only allowing conversions on 27% uh, of the time, Chris. So this could be a great chance for them to set the tone early on. Three receivers split to the right. Got some running rooms, gonna be hit right at the line of scrimmage. Depends on where they mark it, and Mike, Judging by the spot of the ball, I think they're going to be about a foot short. They are going to be short. Let's see what they do. Nothing coming from the sidelines yet, but it does look like uh, they are going to, if we look at the replay here, uh, Braden Hansen is very comfortable in that pocket, but that time he didn't have anywhere to go. Stepped up and uh, coming in to make the tackle just short of third down yardage that time, so it'll force a three and out for North Dakota. Brett Cameron will do the punting for North Dakota, standing at his 20-yard line. Sean Johnson back to receive good kick drives Johnson all the way back inside the 15 where he fields it cuts back up inside still on his feet now hit and taken down at the 17 yard line 
So good punt coverage by North Dakota, and the Montana State offense goes to work from their own 17. Yeah, that was a great punt. Johnson just put on his heels right from the get-go on that one. Had to go about, about 10 yards just to field that. Uh, lucky that he did, because that's one that probably would have stopped uh, short of the goal line. And as it is, Montana State will start on their own 18. Denarius McGee, you see the numbers on him. Another sensational season, 14 touchdowns, nearly 1,900 yards. First and 10 for the Bobcats, their first possession of the afternoon. McGee rolls left. Looks, now fires out there and caught and dropped at the 25. Intended for Ellis. Incomplete pass brings up second and 10. Western State's insurance starting lineups offensive line. Sampson at center, Catalano and Foster on the right side. Gadecki and Widenauer over on the left side. Backs and receivers. Cody Kirk is back and returning to the lineup along with Bleskin, Gilbert, Ellis, and Perkins is the tight end on second down. And the give is to Cody Kirk. Not much there, brought down right at the 20-yard line. Gain of two on the play will bring up third and eight. The defense for North Dakota, Nelson, Benjamin, and Brenneman in the 3-4. Linebacking core is Jablonski, Otto, Peters, and Finley and in the backfield for North Dakota. Mackie, Kennedy, Carr, and Brown. Third and eight now from the 20-yard line. McGee operates out of the gun. Straight drop, looks across the middle, now brings it down, has some running room. McGee hit at the 25, falls forward, and I think he's gonna be just short of the first down. Yeah, real real similar to what we saw uh, that time, two passes. The, uh, the first pass could have been caught here, but as we go to it, you can see it just broke down. McGee tries to hit, uh, do it, come up field and get that, but good job by those linebackers from North Dakota. Mercero back to receive as Montana State goes three and out. They'll be forced to kick as Rory Perez stands inside his 15-yard line. High snap, Perez gets off a good one. Mercero calls for and makes the fair catch at the 32-yard line. 11.34 to go, opening quarter, no score from Bozeman. Planning a stay in Billings? See what the newly renovated Billings Hotel and can Second possession of the afternoon for North Dakota. First down from the 33-yard line. Hansen out of the gun. Empty backfield. Looks right. Now fires across the middle, and that's caught up near the 40-yard line as Blair Townsend, the wide receiver out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota, brings it in. Well, that time, as you said, they went with the uh, open backfield five wide able to get enough time to get that off for the short game. Nice pickup on first down, set up a short second five, bring that whole playbook into the option. Saw a lot of this last week against Montana, the short short running route or passing routes. Pick up a five, second and five now from the 38. Hanson under center. Straight give up over the 40, and that is gonna be a couple of yards short of the first down flag on the play. Mitch Sutton, the ball carrier. Yeah, it looked like that time uh, Zach Minner from Montana State got a little bit early jump on that uh, at the, in that left tackle slot, so I think they will give him the, uh, the five yards and it will be a first down. A little bit different look. Montana State actually kind of packed the box a little bit at an additional man down on the line of scrimmage, but uh, obviously negated by the penalty. You can see inside here, Minner just step over the top of your screen there to bring up the first and 10. First down from the 43. First first down of the afternoon by either team. And here they go, a little double reverse, and now Hanson winds up with the football, looks downfield, and almost picked off. That was great coverage by the Montana State secondary there. They were not fooled at all. Well, as you can see, they bring Miller underneath. He flips the ball back here to the receiver, back to the quarterback, but it was great coverage downfield. Look at, they've got Bethley in the corner on the outside, had the receiver completely bracketed, and, and so far, there's one play in the middle of the field as we talk. Stephen Bethley getting the better of that one. So second and eight now from the 43. Here comes pressure off the corner, and Hanson gets rid of it, but very little there. Managed to complete the pass to Sutton. 
but no gain on the play will bring up third down. A good pressure off the edge that time. Boy, that's a great job to get rid of this ball because the pressure comes hard. They bring, watch, uh, number two, Moyaka Ola, come up the middle. He just dumps that thing off, but there's number one, Stephen Bethley there to make the tackle for little or no gain. Third and nine from the 44. Sutton in the backfield, three receivers set to the right. Here's Hanson, steps up in the pocket, now fires out there, has a man wide open, but simply overthrows Blair Townsend, who was all alone out there, but the incomplete pass will force Cameron to come on and kick it away. A good job that time of, of getting pressure again up front. Hanson not cap quite able to step in to that throw, and I think that's why you saw it go a little bit high and wide, Chris. Johnson stands back at his 10-yard line as Cameron will kick it away. Bobcats trying to set up the return. Ball hits at the 20 and is downed inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. So field position so far in the favor of North Dakota, 9.43 in the first when we come back after these words from your local stations. Personal mobility solution. Montana State back on the field for their second possession of the afternoon in a scoreless game. Checking other scores around the big sky. Look at this. Southern Utah leading Eastern Washington 13-10 in the second. That Southern Utah team's pretty good. Northern Arizona, a safety over Northern Colorado. Montana leading over Idaho State. Portland State, UC Davis a bit later today. Here's McGee out of the gun on first down. Looks left, throws right. It's got block header at the 25. And up to the 30 to the 31 and a first down for Montana State. And Mike, this this rivalry, longtime fans know all about this because it was suspended, but they've met 28 times in 31 seasons. And there you see a nice catch by Flockhatter out in the open. And yeah, it was a it used to be a stable of this uh, at Montana State. Uh, ended in 1983 was the last time before today, but good to see it get back going. Montana State with a very slight edge in the overall series. 15 wins to 13. And Cody Kirk saw that hole close rapidly by that North Dakota defense. Yeah, just a little reverse out and give there, but a nice job by that lineman and linebacker coming down the line of scrimmage. McGee fires across the middle, and that's caught at the 40-yard line by Perkins. And Perkins got enough for the first down, just over the 40. Lee Perkins stepping in uh, admirably for the injured uh, T. Salanoa. Just this boat, just just in front of the linebacker, the ball thrown perfectly. A good throw and catch on first down for Montana State. Here's McGee on first down. Little play action, deep drop, fires across the middle, caught at the 45. Inside North Dakota territory as Tanner Bleskin makes a tough catch, but hangs on to it for a first down. McGee uses the play fake on the run, the play action to freeze the backers and allow the receiver to sneak in behind them and in front of the safety seam, come right across the middle of your screen. And again, good throw and catch. And uh, so far, Chris, really nice protection up front for Montana State. Cody Kirk on the carry, takes it close to the 40-yard line. Well, that catch by Bleskin, his 48th of the season, that's the team leader, over 600 yards in receiving so far for Tanner Bleskin. Yeah, Bleskin comes in with just under eight catches per game, a number good enough to lead the Big Sky Conference. Gain of three, second and seven from the 41. And they swing it out here to Johnson. Johnson picks up a block at the 40, to the 35, to the 30, still on his feet at the 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown Montana Tate. Sean Johnson stays in bounds for the touchdown. Wow. We've seen him very rarely in the uh, offense for Montana State. You see him as a huge part of the kicking game, but, but watch the tightrope he does down the sideline and the excellent block he gets from his receivers. C-Wing will get the first one, and I believe it's a number 84 Flockett, or the, there you see the first one, and then you see uh, Flockett get just enough, and boy, that's a big play, and Montana State is on the scoreboard. Here's Perez on for the extra point, kick up, and good. So a 7.54 to go in the game, uh, in the opening quarter, Montana State strikes first, a lead seven to nothing. Back at Bobcat Stadium, Silva set to kick it away. 
after the touchdown by Sean Johnson. Ball's driven back into the end zone. Hard no choice but to down it. And back out to the 25-yard line where North Dakota will take over on offense. And again, Mike, this is just a great job of Johnson staying in bounds. Yeah, you get Sean Johnson out in space where he is uh, has the ability to be magic at times. And that's a, a nice couple moves to the inside. Creates enough of a seam up that outside and just does an amazing job of staying in bounds and getting that one in the end zone. Well, we got to give the assist to Cruz Seawing, too, because that was a great block that sprung him to the outside. It certainly was. Ford scoring drive, six plays, 82 yards. Minute 49 off the clock. Johnson, the 41 yard touchdown, and the early 7 0 lead. Here's Hansen now, back to work on offense. Looks, fires across the middle, and this is caught at the 45, down to the 40. To the 35, to the 30, to the 20, inside the 20-yard line, and a huge play by North Dakota as Galladay hauls it in and takes it all the way down to the 15-yard line of Montana State. Boy, we talk about how North Dakota likes to use the middle of the field. Again, the play fake, plenty of time to get deliver the ball, and that time Bethley is beat by the true freshman, uh, Kenny Galladay, uh, wide receiver, 6'4", 185 out of Chicago, Illinois. Just like that, Chris, <laughs> North Dakota is back in it. You can never count out that offense. So first down from the 15, Mitch Sutton in the backfield. Hansen operates out of the gun. Play fake, looks, fires out here at the 10, incomplete. That was intended for Sutton out of the backfield. I think the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. I think it was. I think it was number 99, Brian Bignell, who was coming up and got just enough of that one uh, to force the incompletion. Still nearly caught that time uh, by the North Dakota receiver. 7.20 to go, opening quarter. North Dakota looking for their first points in the afternoon. Hansen coming off that sensational game against the Grizz when he threw for over 600 yards trying to put his team into the end zone. He's got Sutton in the backfield. And they'll stay on the ground, and Alexi Grosselock with a huge tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Boy, good everything that time. Watch North Dakota is trying to move this to their right. Grosselock does a great job of coming in from the backside underneath the blocking scheme to make the play in the backfield and force a third and long. Jody Owens cleans it up, so third and 10 now from the 17. North Dakota operating against the number one ranked defense in the Big Sky Conference. Crowd on their feet, Sutton in the backfield for Hanson. Hanson looks, now fires to the right side. Touchdown, North Dakota, and who else but Drake Harden to add over 300 yards of receiving last week, scores the touchdown. Greg Harden just gets this. He's out there one-on-one -on -one with Andrews from Montana State. He gives him a little head fake. Andrews turns, Andrews turns to the inside, Harden to the outside, touchdown North Dakota. What an impressive drive for North Dakota to answer the Montana State touchdown. And now an extra point away from tying this game up. Zeb Miller on for the extra point. Ball down, kick on the way, and good. Comes with 6.35 to go in the opening quarter. Tied up at seven as the two that had such a great week last week hook up once again for another touchdown today. Well, you can see they are absolutely on the same page and reading this coverage. We don't see it there, but right before that, it just was a good inside fake by a Harden that completely fooled Andrews, but it did not fool his quarterback who knew exactly where they were going. And that's just really, the, you could see that communication with this quarterback and all of his receivers last week against Montana. Ford scoring drive, four plays, 75 yards, a minute 19 off the clock. Harden on the 17 yard touchdown reception. And just like that, we're all tied up at seven with Montana State set to receive. Well, we've got a couple of quarterbacks that are starting off pretty dang well, Chris. <laughs> uh, Braden Hansen is five for eight, 83 yards. Darius McGee, 40, four for five for 75. And I think they each had one dropped out there. So uh, two impressive signal callers so far this afternoon. Well, and interesting too, that this quarterback situation with North Dakota, Hendrickson, who's not playing, has put up some huge numbers while Hansen was away with the broken leg. Yeah, Hansen gets hurt the first game of the year. Hendrickson stands in. 
for him and performs very, very admirably. They come back, start splitting a little bit of time, but I think after Hanson got the hot hand last week, uh, he's the where you got to go with today. Now Johnson wanted to bring it out, but mishandles it, so take a knee. Yeah, they had a nice wedge set up that time. If he could have fielded it cleanly, it looked like they would have been able to get something going. Let's go down on the field and join Jeff Everly. Hey, Chris. Well, I was talking to head coach Chris Husmanette before the game, and I asked him how did Hanson get from North Carolina to North Dakota, and he said Hanson called him to ask if he come for a visit. He went to a visit in Grand Forks, and he signed right there on the spot, and he's been a great addition to this North Dakota football team, Chris. Well, he has, and, uh, you know, as we mentioned, Hans had been injured for much of the season and really now just getting his first couple of starts. So the Bobcats with the football in a 7-7 game. Trey Robinson in the backfield for the first time, along with Lorenzo Davis. Davis with the call up over the 25 and the 30. Davis tries to shake a tackle, but finally brought down to the 32, but not before he picks up seven on the play, taken down by Will Lewis, the defensive back. Will Lewis came in to kind of save the day. That one looked like it was going to go big, Chris. That was one thing the Montana staff talked about this week is that they were amazed. They counted 20-some plus times where the last possible tackler for North Dakota made the play. Here's McGee, fires up to the 40 to, uh, who is that on the receiving end? That's Block Hatter up near the 41 and it's first down. Young man out of Laurel, Montana. Very Played nice for the locomotives. Good class you A program. You can see that uh, McGee is, looks comfortable in the mm -hmm. pocket today, Chris. He is just standing in there, not a lot of pressure so far, setting his feet and rifling the football to those middle receivers. He seems to play better and more in a rhythm when they go to that no huddle, when he gets the team to the line, calls the plays, and he gets in a good rhythm. He'll stay on the ground at Davis. A little bit of running room, picks up four on the play to the 45, second and six. Yeah, well, you can really tell when he starts out in that rhythm. Here you can see a little give to Davis off the right side, a nice hole there initially, but uh, that linebacking core led that time uh, by number 52. That's Ben Peters, uh, is a very solid group. Second and six for Montana State after the four yard gain. And they'll stay on the ground. Davis tries to get to the edge. He's got it to midfield. Puts a shoulder into it to the 48. Close to a first down. Might be a yard short. It's going to be, I think, just a little bit short here that time. Watch the block on the outside. Wide now are first. And then Trey Robinson gets just enough of the outside to turn this thing up. Good pursuit. But as you said, very near first down yardage. It'll be a very short third and maybe a foot for Montana State. Ramil Harris on the stop, third and one from the 49. Here's McGee, the give is to Cody Kirk, right side, keeps those feet moving, first down to the 45. One thing you know about Cody Kirk, Mike, he's not gonna go down on the first guy that hits him. No, he is not, and he's gonna go down if he usually finishes every run on his stomach. Did so again that time. Uh, had more than enough to pick up the first down for Montana State. Alex Hickel checks in at linebacker for North Dakota. Bobcats at the 45 and a first down. Here's McGee out of the gun. Straight drop, looks left, fires out there, caught by Flockheader at the 38-yard line. So Flockheader is figured in the offense prominently here in this opening quarter. He really has that time. He is matched up on the outside with Ramil Harris and just does a little bit of stop route in front of that first down marker. A good job by Harris driving up, but if you're going to give him that much room, Denarius McGee is going to get you the football. He'll stay on the ground to Davis. Davis gets to the outside of the 30. Running room of the 25 down close to the 20 and a first down. Lorenzo Davis, good hard running, and that speed to the outside more than North Dakota could handle. Yeah, not only his speed, but watch the blocks he gets. Trey Robinson again delivers an awesome block here right on the outside. You can see Seawing has got his men walled off as well. Those are what allow you to get to that second level is, is guys like that going out and making that extra effort. Inside four minutes to go, first quarter. Quarter, ball at the 21 yard line for Montana State. Here's Denarius. Looks now, fires off the hit, goes to the inside route to Bleskin. And Tanner Bleskin out of bounds at the 15. He was the inside man. They were running Gilbert deep on the same play. They actually flood all three zones on the left side of this formation. You see underneath, and Sea Wing is over the top of him. 
and they had another receiver all the way over the top in the end zone. So just too many men over there for that defense to account for. Second and four. Davis, right side, trips, falls forward to the 10, but that should be enough for a first down. So a nice job by Montana State, Mike, of mixing the running game with the passing game, and this is a very well-executed drive for Montana State. Yeah, they're mixing the, the, the run and the pass, and they're uh, mixing personnel packages, but here you can see a huge hole there. Credit the offensive line. It wasn't for the shoestring tackle by number 57, Brian Otto. That one was probably six as well. Ball's on the 11 and a first down. McGee looks to the right, has time, now rolls out. McGee now fires into the, close to the end zone. That's caught inside the five. And Seawing brings it down. They're going to spot it, looks like, at about the three-yard line. Well, look at the gun at the end of this. For the first time today, McGee's able to, is forced to move out of the pocket a little bit, but he is able to set his feet and find a receiver, that little bit of freelance that he does so well. A lot of different receivers are already contributing for Montana State this afternoon. Seawing from Seiko up there on the high line. The big city boys. Yeah, second and two from the three. They can get a first down. Direct snap to Cody Kirk. Barrels forward. Touchdown, Montana State. <laughs> As the Cats regain Chris, the lead. Look at, this one's got to go to the offensive line because watch Kirk get behind Catalano and Gadecki on this thing. They pull across, and boy, he just sticks on his hip and rides those big boys into the end zone. Great job by Cody Kirk, but that offensive line is what made it happen. I'll tell you what, that was a good play by Perkins as well, the tight end. He got in the hole and pushed the pile forward. So Perez on for the extra point, and the kick is good. 2.30 to go, opening quarter. Montana State responds after the North Dakota touchdown, marching 75 yards for the score. Cody Kirk in well, from is, three yards we out. We take another look at Cody Kirk. This is his 23rd rushing touchdown as a Bobcat, a number that will move him into second place tied with another guy you don't really think of as a rusher, a guy named Travis Lule. One of the great ones here at Montana State, playing north of the border now. You know, who would have thought, Mike, honestly, when Travis Lule finished his career, as we take a look at the Ford scoring drive, 11 plays, 75 yards, four minutes off the clock, who would have thought when Travis Lule left, how many people thought some of his, his records are never going to get touched? He put up such big numbers, and then you see this Denarius McGee, who's a junior, and he's very rapidly closing in on a whole bunch of those. He is, and, and, it, and they do look untouchable at first because so rarely, particularly anymore, do you get a kid that comes in. Those weren't records that were going to go down in three years. You had to be a four-year player. Uh, McGee was able to do that, starting and putting up just huge numbers, over 3,000 yards, throwing the football as a, as a redshirt freshman. Back to receive is Harden along with Ramon Bridges as Silva will kick it away. Plenty of scoring in this one so far, just as we thought. Montana State with the lead early on here in the first quarter. Oh, Mother Nature took care of that one. <laughs> Try it again. Those wind, it's, I don't know if that was pure wind there, but the, the winds are picking up. We said a little bit different weather than Montana State has faced this year. A little cooler, and now the wind as this game goes along is picking up considerably. So Silva will try it again, gets a foot into it. Harden's gonna have a chance to return this one at the five, up over the 15, and hit at the 15 yard line. Alexi Grosselock with a great open field tackle to knock Harris down at the 15. Well, this one just on the goal line, as you said, Chris, Harden brings it out, hesitates there, but Grosselak was on a dead sprint for him and just did a great job of making the open field tackle on the run. Jeff, what you got? Chris, well, I asked center Sean Sampson just how excited he was that running back Cody Kirk would be coming back. And Sampson said he was very excited. He's a key facet of this offense. And running back is certainly a luxury that the Bobcats have, Chris, with three stellar backs. All right, Jeff, North Dakota with the football now trailing 14 to seven and the ball at the 17. And now flags come flying in. That's gonna be a false, false start. start. Yep. Offense number 67, five yard penalty, still first down. Do you get that Sonny Holland end zone rocket and rolling? I was gonna say, this is not the area on the field where you wanna back yourself up into that end zone because uh, they are a noisy bunch down there and they can make it very difficult to operate. 
Harden checks in on first down, first and 15, as the ball is back at the 12-yard line. Jake Miller in the backfield. And Hanson. Now pressure, fires across the middle. Galladay with the catch, up over the 15 to the 17. To get back the penalty yardage, it'll be second and 10. Boy, that's for the first time, Montana State does something a little bit different than we've seen this year. Not only did they bring a linebacker, but they also brought Fuller on the blitz from his safety spot. A good job of recognition on the part of Hanson. Got that ball loose, uh, but really just get the five back now and it's second and 10. Galladay, a big target, 6'3", 185 pounder out of Chicago, Illinois. Second and 10 now from the original line of scrimmage at the 17. Here's Hanson, fires out here on the deep out and almost picked off. Wow, that was close. Flowers had a look at it. Flowers had a look at it. But underneath, on the underneath coverage here, you see 44, Alexi Grosselak coming. The receiver trips up a little bit and Flowers, I don't think, was expecting to get that ball with was more uh, intent on making a play through the receiver. Uh, a, a break on the part of North Dakota that time to, to still have this football. Sutton now in the backfield for Hansen on third down from the 17. Three receivers set to the left. Hansen looks across the middle, incomplete. Little slant route intended for Jameer Jackson, but incomplete on the play. We'll bring up fourth down. This is, uh, watch the outside here. They're manned up. Ooh. A little bit of a, um, I don't know what you call that, a friendly hug, I think, that time. But uh, obviously, he wasn't in the pattern. They were going for their big receiver, Jameer Jackson. Uh, pressure that time by Shrivice forced Hanson to get rid of that early. Here's Cameron's punt, end over end, that hits at midfield and now picked up by Johnson. Kind of flirting with disaster there, but Boy, yeah, that was a <laughs> heads up play on the part of Sean Johnson. Looked like it went off a Bobcat uh, shorter in the return team. It, it may have been C-Wing, but a good job of going and getting on the football. So the Bobcats with the football and the lead with a minute 31 to go in the opening quarter. It's a big game for Montana State. You know, they lose to Eastern Washington a couple of weeks ago, Mike, and now all of a sudden they're looking up at three teams in the Big Sky Conference, Cal Poly, Eastern Washington, and Northern Arizona are all unbeaten heading into play today. Yeah, it is just such a competitive league. That top half of this conference is, is amazing, and some of that's going to shake out. Did we get a whistle here? Uh, looks like that's going to be... Uh, I think we're going to have a false start against Montana State trying to come underneath there with Johnson. But yeah, Chris, it is going to be an exciting uh, last few weeks as we try to false figure start. out who is going to be. Offense number 55. Still first down. Not only the conference champion, but uh, really which teams are going to get a shot at getting in the playoffs. And at this yeah. point, you look and you go, boy, they, they could take four or even five uh, from the big sky. Yeah, as of now, I think four for sure would go to the postseason. Here's McGee now, bobbles the football, now pressure up the middle, avoids the sack, flag comes down, and shoved out of bounds at the 42. I think we might have holding back here at the 30, but we'll see what the flag is. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Chris, as McGee was vacating the pocket. Holding, offense, number 93, 10-yard penalty for the previous spot, still first down. Goes against Perkins, and. As good as this Montana State offense is, and here we'll get a look at it again. And you know, I'm just trying to, to spring uh, uh, a handful to the of jersey uh -huh. there. Uh. Well, the real Achilles heel of this North Dakota team has been its defense. They give up 37 a game and over 472 yards of offense on the opposing team. So defense has been an issue. Cody Kirk. Straight up the middle, spins out of one tackle, falls forward to the 35, and that'll bring up second and six. Well, we're gonna we have the penalty, Chris, so it's gonna still be a long. Oh, yeah, it's gonna right. look about second and 16, but a good hole here. Cody gets behind, cuts off his block, and is able to power this thing through, get a big chunk of it back, but still quite a ways to go. Second and 16 from the 35, rolling pocket now as McGee throws it. 
block at her with the catch at the 45 up to midfield. And they're going to mark it at the 48, and that's a first down. Well, it didn't take them long to pick that back up. But McGee just looks very comfortable throwing the ball today. Watch him as he, he rolls right on this and just sort of surveys the field, takes his time, and then just, again, rockets that ball in there. A nice pickup that time to flock it. First down gain to the 48, moves the chains. And McGee hands it to Kirk, who's got some room. Cody to the 45, still on his feet. Bulls forward down to the 24-yard line. Football fans appreciate that kind of effort, don't they? Well, if they don't, they, they sure should because it is just, watch this. They end up cutting this play in underneath where they brought their blitzing linebacker. And Cody looked like he was down. Then he looked like he might take it to the house. But a nice job that time by 25. That's five yards. Now Ellis climbing the ladder and makes a great catch at the 38. That ball was high, and Ellis got up there and snagged it. The junior out of Mansfield, Texas. That's a first down. Yeah, right at the marker again. A good job being heads up. Not only a great play, but uh, field awareness, knowing where he needed to be to get that first down. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. So one quarter of football is in the books here in Bozeman. Montana State on top of North Dakota, 14 to seven. First quarter numbers, and the Bobcats already with 200 yards of total offense. Stay on the ground to the 36-yard line. A short game that time by Cody Kirk up the middle, but really those first quarter stats, you can see already 129th passing from McGee. The first pass of the game, he throws out to Ellis. He's not able to keep it since that time, Chris, 10 consecutive completions. Second and eight now from the 36. Here's McGee, straight drop, looks, fires across the middle. This is caught inside the 20, Tanner Blessing to the 15, down to the 10 yard line and a first down for Montana State. Bleskin already having a big game. His, that's his third catch, but watch this develop in here. The run fake, but just great blocking on the inside. He cuts across the middle of the field. You get that matchup with him on a backer, and he is going to win that one almost every time. Gain is all the way down to the nine-yard line, first and goal. Opening minute, second quarter. Here's McGee, quarterback keeper inside the five. Balls forward to the, now close to the one-yard line. Well, this one looks like it was run all the way from McGee. He just takes a snap of the shotgun, tucks it, and goes to his left, tries to cut it up in that seam. But uh, with good linebacker play again, it was number 52, Ben Peters, stopping that one from getting in the end zone. Second and goal from the two. Give us to Kirk. Kirk runs up there behind Trey Robinson. Touchdown, Montana State. <laughs> Nothing it fancy just there, looks huh? like an instant replay sometimes when Cody gets the ball. He just so is so good instinctively of getting behind and trusting the blocks of the offensive lineman. Watch these big guys up front just lead him in here. Pulls across. Cody does a good job of just believing in it. Doesn't look like there's anything there. And all of a sudden the referees are throwing their hands up. We talked about Cody Kirk. He tied Travis Lule for second or uh, for fourth. Now he's moving up in the third, I think, with his 24th rushing touchdown. 13 32 to go, second quarter. Montana State ups the lead 21 7 over North Dakota. You we talked about North Dakota's schedule, Mike. And talked about playing Eastern Washington, Cal Poly, Northern Arizona, all nationally ranked, and now going up against number four, Montana State. It's been tough sled. Yeah, they have really gotten that, uh, the welcome to the big sky <laughs> menu this year because it has been tough sledding from the start, but they have played very well and have yet to play a big sky game. They have not uh, won them all, but they've yet to be, uh, have a game where they were competitive. Harden will take a knee in the end zone, and Mike, let's take a look at the touchdown by Cody Kirk, and how about that offensive line? 
Yeah, watch the big guys in here. You can see it. They just push this thing. Backers on their back. When you see all your your <laughs> offensive linemen laying on their chest with the running back on top of them, that's how that play's supposed to end. What's it supposed to look like, huh? A lot of backs who might be a little bit different. They may step to the side, but Cody is <laughs> is more than happy to follow those big guys in there and uh, let them lead the way. Numbers on Hanson not nearly as productive as last week. Just 88 yards so far as he flips it out here to Galladay who makes the catch and gets up over the 25 to the 28. It'll be a pickup of three, so. Second and seven, and, and Mike, as you know, and Bobcat fans know, this is a very young offensive line for Montana State that's really matured as the season's gone on. Yeah, they're getting better and better, and I think that's what you expect when you've got uh, a coach like Coach McAdoo. If mm -hmm. people thought they are going to be the weak link, I don't think that that's ever going to be the case under his tutelage, but they are young, and it's going to take some time, but they are uh, they're, uh, growing by leaps and bounds. Pressure now for Hanson's got a man underneath, caught at the 30, but a great open field tackle by Noah Moyakiola because that could have gone for first down yardage as Jameer Jackson makes the catch. But yeah, Jameer Jackson just comes underneath the formation. That's a tough play for linebackers, but as you said, that is a great open field tackle. Those were kind of the, some of the plays that we saw. Uh, Big success with, as you mentioned earlier, short throws last week against Montana, uh, but they weren't tackling as well as you saw there, and those receivers were able to turn that thing up. Third and four, another big third down, pressure up the middle, and Hanson goes down. Taken down, and that was Jody Owens, the linebacker, straight up the middle for the loss. Boy, he looked to be just unaccounted for. Here's how you see it if you're the quarterback. He is completely unaccounted for. Comes on the blitz that time, and uh, Hanson did not have a chance. So the loss is all the way back to the 26-yard line. Cameron to punt it away. Johnson stands at his 35. Good kick as Johnson fields it inside the 35. Slips and falls. Loses the football for a moment, but Montana State takes over at the 30. <laughs> well, this is, he can make he, things interesting. He does yeah. make it exciting at every time. That time just gets a little bit tripped up, loses the ball, gets back <laughs> on it. There's never a, a punt return with this Montana State system that is, hasn't been at least exciting. Think that's exciting for Coach Ash? I, I think it's, <laughs> uh, he would use a different adjective. <laughs> One person's excitement is another man's <laughs> angst. <laughs> Cats with the football and a two touchdown lead. Just over 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. So far, this Montana State offense has been productive. Here's McGee. Rolls, rolls, now fires, has the man at the 30. And that's Johnson. Tried to dance away, but no gain on the play. Maybe lost one. And second down. Credit the coverage of that time by North Dakota. McGee had all day to throw that ball, just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Uh, ended up checking down to Johnson uh, as a safety valve, and uh, as you said, Chris, actually lost a little bit on the play. Second and 11, they'll stay on the ground. And this is Cody Kirk to the 35. And a gain of five. Watch Kirk here again, just a good push by the O-line and just, you know, a shoestring tackle that time. They are very close to breaking one of those inside runs and I fully expect that to happen today because they've just been inches away on several occasions. You haven't seen uh, Trey Robinson involved yet in the offense. You may see him here at well, third Well, he five. is involved. He, we haven't seen him with the football, right. but boy, he is definitely involved. And there you go, you know, right on you. you, Chris. <laughs> So Robinson makes the catch. Unfortunately, no gain on the play. We'll bring up fourth down. I got to maybe do a little bit more film study. I think you were uh, out in front of me that time. Chris. <laughs> Cats will punt it away after three consecutive touchdowns. Mercero stands inside his 25. And Rory Perez will kick it away. This is the first season that North Dakota would be bowl el or playoff eligible in the FCS playoffs. Last year, they were co-champions of the Great West Conference at eight and three, but of course couldn't compete in the postseason. Mercero calls for the fair catch, makes it at the 30 yard line. North Dakota with the football when we come back after these words from your local stations, you're watching Big Sky Game Day. 
Bit of a surprise. Northern Arizona, top Northern Colorado, Montana big over the Bengals. First down for North Dakota. And Mr. Daly meets the running back right at the line of scrimmage. And not a whole lot there for Sutton. Yeah, good job by the front. Good push that time inside by Big Nell on the other side. Took two blockers upside. Freed Daly up to come in and make the stop for just a short two yard game. See the numbers on Sutton this season in what's predominantly a passing attack, but still close to 400 yards so far. Here's Hansen. Fires out here, got one-on-one -on -one coverage, but incomplete. Oh, they got what they wanted, is they got single coverage on Greg Harden. Yeah, they did. That's a great matchup if you're the North Dakota yeah, get a linebacker coaching on staff because he is paired up, manned up with uh, Cole Moore, the backer. But here's the pressure that keeps him on his back foot. Uh, but again, the coverage was there. A good matchup, but a good job that time by the linebacker from Montana State running with who was obviously an outstanding receiver. Yeah, Greg Hart. Zach Minner applied the pressure. Numbers on Hanson today, eight for 14, 95 yards and a touchdown. Third and eight from the 33. Hanson getting chased, gets over the 40 and a first down close to the 45. Not the fastest guy on the field, but he had enough uh, running room to pick up the first down. Well, watch the defenders as he, the pocket starts to break down. Like you said, he does not want to run this ball. Looks still limping a little bit, had a broken leg, and you can see able to get just enough to move the change, which is exactly what he needed to do. Gain is up to the 44 and a first down. Hanson this time directly under center. Now flips it out here for Harden, who makes the catch at the 45. Up over midfield to the 47 yard line, and it'll be a yard short of a first down. Boy, this is a good job by Hart picking this one off the turf, and when he does, he's got number 83, Jameer Jackson, 6'3, 233, blocking out in front of him and is able to, to pick up a nice nine yard gain for North Dakota. Now, that's what you want to do with an explosive receiver just get him the ball in open space, let him create. Just like that, an eight yard gain, second and two from the 48. And Miller's got running room straight up the middle to the 40 yard line. Good burst of speed by Miller and that's a first down. Big hole here, they catch Montana State in a blitz. Owens goes a little bit over pursues that one but is able to come back, uh, get, get some help from Zach Miller. But watch, you can see good job of Miller by cutting that back inside of the pursuing linebacker. Picking up another North Dakota first down. North Dakota product out of Bismarck. He's a junior. First down from the 40. Clock continues to run, winding down to the eight minute mark of the second quarter. Here's Hansen. Getting pressure, gets it out there and almost picked off by Moe Akiola. And that went right through his hands at the 25 yard line. I'll tell you what, it is, they've gotten to him once, but the defensive line from Montana State has hurried uh, Braden Hansen all afternoon. He has done a great job of getting rid of the football. And again, that one may be uh, one that he would have liked to have had back, but really no choice, Chris. It was that or take the sack. Well, Schreibeis was right there and almost had him in the backfield. Incomplete pass will bring up second and 10. Bobcats show blitz off the corner. Hanson throws it out there and it's bobbled and interception, or incomplete rather, intended for Seth Wistoff. The tight end brings up third down. Boy, Wistoff, another big boy that time. They're coming from the tight end, 6'4", 269. More of a blocking type uh, tight end. I think he only has three catches on the year, but he, he made a great effort and just wasn't able to bring that one in. Blair Townsend comes in at wide receiver as it's another third down here for this North Dakota offense, Galladay in as well, along with Harden, and now they'll shift Sutton into the backfield. Hanson out of the gun. Pressure, steps up in the pocket, and now goes down at the 45-yard line. And a sack by the Montana State defense. 
Well, he is going to get pressure from everybody. Big Nell does an exchange. You see Minner come up the middle, tries to get it out to that side. Schreibice is there to clean it up. That is just a great team front package there. It bringing the blitz uh, on the outside and having a little twist stunt inside. Been close to getting them all day, and that time they do. Cameron's kick straight up in the air, and this is not a good one. It's going to go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. And Montana State has the football when we return 7-19 to go in the second in a 21-7 game. Okay, sports fans, put your game face on. It's the Built Ford Tough Sales Event. Taking the field, Ford Super Duty. Best in class torque and horsepower. That's how you crush the competition. And best in class maximum towing and fuel economy. It racks up major yardage, pal. F-Series is America's MVP. 35 years straight. Touchdown, baby. Now get up to $7,600 in total savings on Super Duty with zero for 60 plus 1,000 cash back. It's the Built Ford Tough Sales Event. See your local Ford store today. Reduce your energy use and seize the savings with Northwestern Energy's Efficiency Plus programs, giving you hundreds of ways to save with rebates and incentives in your home and business. If we're all more energy efficient, we can reduce our use. Visit northwesternenergy.com slash E plus or call 800-823-5995. Northwestern Energy. This broadcast of Bobcat football is brought to you in part by Billings Hotel and Convention Center, the one with the water slides. Montana Ford, try one at your Montana Ford store, compareford.com. Rocky Mountain Bank, where great things happen. And by Western States Insurance, peace of mind from the people you trust. First down for Montana State from the 25 and the give is to Davis. And Arenzo up close to the 30 yard line. Looked like it was Alex Hickel, number 44, came up from his linebacker just to trip him up. But again, O-line doing a nice job for Montana State opening up those holes. And so far, uh, backers from North Dakota doing an admirable job to shut that thing down. Flags fly. McGee throws out here incomplete for Ellis. McGee's pass incomplete intended for Ellis. Going down. Gonna take a while to work this one out, I think, but uh, it, the initial indication was a false start against Montana State, but it uh, looks like there may have been a second penalty. Illegal formation, offense, too many men in the backfield. That penalty be declined, third down. So the penalty declined, it brings up third and six. Total yards. Boy, domination by Montana State so far, doubling up North Dakota. 246 to 122. Well, and then of that 122, 68 of it came on just the one passing play. So really, they have been pretty quiet on the offensive side of the football, especially considering that they came in off of uh, a huge game last week against Montana and with the overall conference lead in total offense. Nice pass and catch by McGee to Tanner Bleskin, and that's a first down to the 42-yard line. 6.45 to go in the second quarter. I'm sure Montana State would love to put together a long drive here going into halftime. They stay on the ground at Davis, breaks one tackle, falls forward to the 47. Short well, gain on the play. You Take look it. at that one, see what he sees. He's just moving this thing and then cuts back into that seam, but again, uh, nice job. That was Nelson, number 45, coming down from his in position to stop that thing. They haven't really stopped Montana State at the line of scrimmage, but they haven't given up the big run yet either. Second and five now from the 47. McGee rolls right, 
throws across to Ellis at the 45 and a first down. And wow, does he take a whack at the end of that play as Siobhan McKay just leveled him. It's just, look at the arm strength here. Throwing on the run, coming back, throwing inside across your body. A great job, but as you said, Ellis pays for this one at the end. Uh, Chavez came in and really put a shot on Chavez McKay. From the 45, first down Montana State. They'll stay on the ground. Here's Davis, got room to the 40. Lorenzo spins forward to the 35. And Davis down to the 34-yard line and another first down for Montana State. North Dakota player shaken up on the play. And now they'll stop play as Will Lewis shaken up on the play. Let's take a look at it again. Well, they get a good seal on the left side of the offensive line here. You can see that there's just plenty of room for this thing until he gets the second level. And then just pretty good tackling at the end of the play. They miss him up front but uh, keep him from uh, turning that into a real big one. And McGee's pass to C-Wing is caught at the 30, and look at this. Down close to the first down. He's still not going down, Chris. <laughs> Cruz C-Wing. He said, blow the whistle for the rest of these guys, but I'm not done. This is great effort on number 10's part. He catches this in traffic to begin with and then just refuses to go down, and he was very, very near the first down. Those highline kids are tough. Absolutely. First down, or make it second and one. Again, a nine on the play. Oh, no one had it to, so McGee, he gets hit at the 25, and he is going to be short of the first down. So a broken play, McGee turned to hand it off, and there was no one there. Yeah, it looks like uh, Lorenzo Davis is, somebody went the wrong way. They, uh, Davis is pointing, saying that he thought he wasn't. Obviously, he, he was in the neighborhood, but he wasn't looking to get the ball there at all. So. A little bit of confusion is going to bring up a big third down as Montana State tries to keep this drive moving. Third and one, they need to get to the 24. This time they get it to Kirk, who's hit behind the backfield, but Cody blasts forward to the 23, and that's a first down. Boy, Montana yep. State loaded up on that left side. They had a tight end package with a, another tight end over the top and a wing. And uh, Cody just does a nice job of fishing that one through there. But boy, a really good job up front that time uh, by North Dakota. Just pretty tough when the, the, your yardage is that short. So that'll move the chains as we're now under four minutes to go in this opening half of play. Montana State driving here is McGee. Straight drop, now pulls it down. Still looking, will keep the football and slides forward to the 17, 18 yard line. Makes something out of nothing, four, maybe five on the play. Uh, interesting that time. North Dakota comes with a three man front and they stack both their backers on the end of the line of scrimmage. But that time they peel them both out. McGee very patiently waited for someone to come up and break coverage, but a disciplined job by that group of linebackers for North Dakota. Uh, he's forced to run it, picks up the, the, the four or five yard. Well, he had a good look at the field, didn't he? Went through a progression of receivers. Yeah, really, there. really did. Just nobody covered yeah. it. You know, he doesn't want to take off with that thing, but uh, that time, uh, no other choice. Here's Davis. Straight ahead, running in the first down and more. Davis, five. Touchdown, Montana State. Wow, what a great run by Arenzo Davis. Breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage, and he's in for the score. Well, we've been talking, or I've been talking about the fact that they have just been you know, inches away on breaking one of those runs for a touchdown. That time, another good job. That three-man front creates a lot of large gaps up front, gives these guys some room. He makes a good cut back there, and then just sprints this thing into the end zone. So Davis ups the lead to 27-7, pending the extra point. Perez on, and it's good. 28-7 our score with 3.04 to go in the second quarter. Montana has an 11. Ford scoring drive, 11 plays, 75 yards, capped off by the 19-yard run by Arenzo Davis. And Mike Arenzo's running like he did last year. He's he's got his legs back and he really looks, starting he to He looks produce. better today, better yep. rhythm than we have seen, uh, I think, so far this season. He just 
Uh, it looks like, again, as with McGee, like they're just comfortable out there. And, and I guess with the running lanes that are being created by that offensive line, that any running back would probably be pretty comfortable with that. Silva puts a foot into it, and this one is going to go out of bounds. That's a penalty. North Dakota will get good field position. Still three minutes to go in the second quarter and all three timeouts remaining. Well, you can see now the wind becoming a factor kick into that end zone. But as we take another look at the touchdown here after we get kick the... out of bounds. Kicking team. Chosen take penalty. 35. First down. But look at this. Look at Davis come up. Or, Excuse me, McGee comes up the line of scrimmage, changes the play, moves his running back, brings Trey Robinson over to lead this thing up into the hole, which he does, and then they cut back, and boom, just good job of, of calling that. That was clearly an on the line audible by the quarterback that did not come from the coaching staff on the sideline. Hansen looks across, and Harden almost makes a spectacular one handed catch. Falls incomplete, Moyakiola with a chance at the interception and incomplete pass will bring up second down. Well, that ball was thrown yeah. behind him, but uh, you cannot blame Hanson. I'll tell you what, that young man is being hit now every single time he throws the ball. He is in, hard to tell from TV, but that wind is really whipping around down there now. Yeah, Pretty the stiff wind breeze. at the back of North Dakota at this point is blowing a, a much more uh, than it was at the beginning of this ball game. Now they'll stay on the ground, and Miller tries to get outside. He turns the corner, but Grosslock with great pursuit, along with Flowers, in a short game on the play. Boy, you can read, really see that uh, Grosslock, as we see it, take a look at the wind there that has started to, to really pick up. Yeah. And is going to be, in fact, a factor as this game plays out. I didn't um, think the guys in the back listened to us, in, in, but I guess they do. <laughs> Someone's listening. <laughs> it may have been purely oh, coincidental, Chris. Oh, the guys in the truck do a great job, but that, they were on that one. Third and seven. And you're right, Hanson's taking a beating here in this second quarter, and that's Boy, been part of really his problem. Has, and it's, uh, you can see, you know, obviously when you saw him take off and run that time, he does not look like he's fully healed. If you look at that right leg, it looks heavily wrapped, but boy, uh, there is a whole bunch of courage inside that young man because he is taking a beating physically. Third down. Hansen's going to get hit right as he throws it. And again, he takes a hard shot from Schreibeis. Oh, just, and, oh man. You, you saw this quarterback, and I hate to keep going back to the Montana game, but it was a game where we saw a quarterback look so good and just completely in rhythm. But today, this is what he's been facing on almost every snap. Watch as, the, as this ball gets to him. He just takes a beating again from the backside. Johnson driven all the way back, and he'll let this one bounce at the 10. That's going to go down close to the five-yard line. Let's take a look at the, we talked about Hanson and all the shots he's taken today. And, He's been pretty fragile anyway, but this is just a look at what he's been dealing with today. Owens comes blasting up the middle to bring him down. Well, almost everybody on that front for Montana State has had a shot at this guy. Like I say, they just the two sacks, I believe, but I'm not sure how many times he has been hit and knocked to the ground. Montana State with 2.05 to go in the second quarter has the football deep in their own end. Well, it'll be interesting to see what, how aggressive they yeah. are. As you said, we're moving into the wind, uh, but to uh, take this thing 95, they've got the two minutes and the three timeouts, so uh, definitely enough time to get it done, but they're going to have to have some big plays. Yeah, they get a little working room there. And Cody Kirk will get it out up over the five to pick up a couple on the play. And we'll see if North, yeah, North Dakota is going to use their timeouts here. They want to get the football back. Timeout. University of North Dakota, that's their first. They still have two remaining. If they can force the Cats into a three and out, they should get decent field position with Montana State kicking into the wind yeah, to most, try to cut into this lead. Yeah, because that, and uh, if, if not, great, uh, a, a great chance to return that ball on a short kick as well, but, and then they've got obviously a chance to try and get something going. Let's go down on the field and join Jeff Everly. Hey, Chris, well, 
North Dakota did have a nickname. They were the Fighting Sioux. Well, they're not the Fighting Sioux anymore because the NCAA wanted two tribes to agree with that name and only one agreed. So until 2015, North Dakota is nicknameless. They can't have a nickname until January of 2015. Kind of a messy ordeal, Chris. Thank you, Jeff. Well, I do know from doing my game research that a Minneapolis sports writer at the turn of the century nicknamed North Dakota the Flicker Tail. So I don't know if we want to go back to that nickname uh, for the... I'm guessing that there's a strong <laughs> likelihood that the Flicker Tails does not come back to replace the suit. <laughs> and McGee and a quarterback keeper up over the 10. And that was a great job of staying in bounds. He got to the sideline and stayed in bounds, fell forward, he's gonna be close to a first down. Yeah, that, I think that's a, a perfect display of the mindset they have on this drive is they just wanna keep the ball and run out the clock. They're not looking to, uh, to move this thing upfield and try and uh, get a chance to kick a field goal or get it in the end zone. Uh, that time McGee made it pretty clear that uh, they wanna run this thing out and are happy to go in the locker room 28 to seven. And they do indeed stay on the ground, and the give is to Cody Kirk up over the 20. And North Dakota, which had thought about using its timeouts to stop the clock now, I think are more than uh, content to let this first half expire and try to regroup after two quarters. North Dakota out of Grand Forks. They play in the Alaris Center and transitioning now to the FCS level. And, uh, I think will be a very good addition to the big sky. Denarius almost perfect on the day, 16 of 18 for 185 yards. Well, we're kind of working that play clock down yep. here. Expect to see another run. And Kirk up over the 25 to the 30. Stays in bounds, close to the 35. That's another first down for Montana State. And again, some good hard running by Cody Kirk. Good to see him back in the lineup. Yeah, been out for three weeks, really. Missed two games completely, but out early after the uh, hamstring injury in the Southern Utah game. So it's nice to see 25 back out there. And he has been uh, at a very productive first half, up over 50 yards already this afternoon. And two touchdowns. So a first down with 40 seconds to go. And McGee this time going to look deep. Now gets... Pressure, rolls right, still on his feet, and now throws it out of bounds. Oh, and I think we're gonna get a flag here. Maybe not. Uh, doesn't look like it, it was it was, uh, it was close, but at that point, you know, he'd really turned himself into a runner. Uh, makes it hard to stop, but uh, that time it was uh, number 98, Ross Brenneman, another guy who's been out a couple of football games, and you know, I think his feet were yeah. probably had already launched before that ball was out, so a good non-call that time by the official. Absolutely. 27 ticks to go, second and 10 on the incomplete pass. McGee out of the gun. Now they'll stay on the ground, and Kurt fumbles the football, but I think he fell on it at the 40-yard line. Ball was stripped, but he went right down on top of it and recovers his own fumble. Yeah, just a good job. I'm not sure he didn't catch the number of the defender, but it pulled right across the ball. I think it may have been Brenneman again that time, but uh, Montana State has had a lot of those bounces go the other way this year and have, have, have fumbled the ball. I think it's uh, there in double figures where they, they fumbled the ball 10 times and uh, that time got a little bit of a break. Yeah, near the bottom of the Big Sky Conference and that all important giveaway takeaway uh, ratio they need to obviously work on improving that and uh, kind of reared its head in the eastern washington game but nevertheless a great first half for montana state as they've exploded offensively and have now taken a 28 7 lead over north dakota into the locker room after two quarters of play and uh, for north dakota uh, as highly touted as their offense has been it's been the montana defense that's won the day so far yeah the, the number one offense against the number one defense so far uh defense all the way really what they north dakota has done defensively is pretty much what they've done all year they've given up a ton of yards and a lot of points so they've always relied on that offensive group to keep them in the game but so far today just not happening so all goes well for montana state after the bye week last week as they continue to chase the top teams in the Big Sky Conference. It's a big day in the Big Sky as we head into the back half of the season with Cal Poly, Eastern Washington, and Northern Arizona all unbeaten heading into play on Saturday and the Cats 
with just that one loss. Let's go downstairs to Jeff Everly. Coach, Montana State has been very effective running the football. How do you contain that group in the second half? Well, that's a million dollar question right now. We got to make sure that uh, we can rally to the ball. And uh, really, that's we're not doing that right now. And the big thing is offensively, we got we to gotta be more productive. Their defense is pretty good, but you know we haven't been able to sustain any drives after the one, the, the one score that we got. Uh, so we have to be better offensively, keep our defense off the field. They've been out there a long time. Thanks for your time, Coach. Right, no problem. Coming up is the Wired X Halftime Report, and stay tuned for this week's Proud to be a Bobcat, presented by Montana State University. Rachel Szymanski. I'm from Highwood, Montana. I'm an elementary ed major and I play on the Bobcat women's basketball team. I came to MSU because I'm a fourth generation Bobcat and I wanted to be part of that family tradition. I grew up loving the team and dreaming about playing here. My professors really prepare me to be a great teacher. They care about my successes on and off the basketball court. I want to become a teacher because I want to be a positive role model and make a difference in a child's life. I would love to teach and coach in a small town in Montana. I love the community that I grew up in and I would love to be a part of that again. It's really special to be from Montana and be able to represent Montana State. I'm Rachel Smansky and I'm proud to be a Bobcat. Montanans have their own definition of what's important in life. Success takes discipline and perseverance. Dedication is more than just putting in your time. And trust is the foundation of long-standing relationships. In Montana, strength means something more. Stockman Bank was born from these principles. They've been the guiding source of our strength since day one. Stockman Bank. Montana Banking. Pure and simple. And welcome to the Wired X Halftime Report in Bozeman, where Montana State has built a commanding 28-7 lead over North Dakota. Impressive offensive performance for the Cats. And, Mike, we could pick out a whole bunch of plays that kind of set the tone for that first half. But I think that one touchdown by Sean Johnson really got things started, huh? Boy, it sure did. Montana State forced to go three and out on their first possession. They come right back with the uh, little swing pass to Johnson in the flat. He gets a couple of great blocks out here on the edge. And then watch him tightrope this thing down the sideline for a 41-yard touchdown to start the scoring for and sort of open the floodgates for that Montana State offense. Got a nice block from Cruz Seawing to spring him and did a nice job of staying in bounds. And uh, that led to a huge offensive output for Montana State. It'll be interesting to see the first half numbers, but I got to believe, Mike, that Montana State, well over 300 in total offense uh, as they have a 28-7 lead here yeah, in Bozeman. Well over to the tune of 357 yards wow. in the first half. Uh, so, yeah, very impressive offensive start. Uh, and as we said, the offense for North Dakota has not really got clicking yet. All right, just getting started here at halftime. We'll be back with more of the Wired X Halftime Report in Bozeman. If you're planning a holiday brunch or Sunday brunch, you're going to love this recipe for strata. It starts by uh, reconstituting a half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes in hot water. And then I'm taking 10 or 11 slices of Texas toast-sized bread, real thick white bread. And you can cut the crusts off if you want, but I cut it into one-inch cubes. Now saute 12 ounces of Italian sausage, hot or mild, your choice. 
and break up the meat with the back of a spoon. And then when it's all cooked, go ahead and drain it on paper towels. First, let's make a custard with eight large eggs and three and a half cups of milk. Then we'll add in a small diced onion and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, along with two teaspoons of gra uh, ground thyme and those reconstituted sun-dried tomatoes, along with the bread and the sausage. I'll mix it all together and pour it into a buttered baking dish. Now this dish is made best by this, making it to this point and then covering it and let it sit overnight in the refrigerator. Now bake in a 375 oven for about 40 to 45 minutes until it's puffed and golden. Then top with some uh, cheddar jack cheese and some crumbled goat cheese, then put it back in the oven for about another five minutes just until the cheese melts. Now, let your strata cool before serving, but first write to me for the recipe or log on to the website and click over to the Kitchen Guy page. I'm Chef Jim. Thanks for watching Kitchen Guy, the tastiest two minutes in television. I'll see you next time. And welcome back to the Wired X Halftime Report in Bozeman, Montana State leading 28-7. As it's been a uh, good, productive first half of football for Montana State, let's go down on the field and join Jeff Everly. Hi, Chris. Well, the offensive line for Montana State has a really nice tradition. Every Friday morning before home football games, they go to the Storm Castle Cafe here in Bozeman and just head out on some excellent breakfast food. It brings them together, and here's what I found out why they do that. You are about to bear witness to a historical event. There you are. The tradition started 10 years ago eating lunch at a Chinese buffet. But an early morning breakfast at Stormcastle Cafe is easier on everyone's schedule. Offensive line coach Jason McIndoe meets with his old lineman every Friday morning before home football games. Who's their starting linebackers? And 7 a.m. is not early for the big guys. Oh, no, definitely not. I mean, we get up at 6 on Tuesdays. I mean, this is... This is late for us, so it's, it's not that bad. Bonding over breakfast doesn't just nourish, it produces good results on the field. You see what he did this year, I mean, we have like redshirt freshmen tight in. And, I mean, we have a really good O-line. Um, I mean, he brings, he's a great family man, so he brings the family in here. You're gonna check with <laughs> Buy breakfast? You get to see both sides of them. You know, you get to see the coaching side and the family man, and that really kind of bonds us together. Eating with one another builds a connection that is important for the guys in the trenches. I've always thought that the offensive line is a state within the nation. You know, you, we're within the offense, we're, we're within the team obviously, but then there's, there's just a special chemistry and just a, a special kind of bond between this group like you can see. Um, and, you, and you have to foster that, you have to build that. I think the O-line position is really based off communicating with each other as other positions. You, it's kind of like a solo team there. and. Uh, I mean, we all work together, but the O-line, you got to communicate, you got to be on the same page, and if you're good friends with each other on and off the field, I mean, makes it easy on the field when you're, when you're off the field just hanging out and chilling with the guy. The early morning shout time goes beyond prepping for any game. I think it's more about the game of life, not just about football, you know, it's, it is building that relationship, because these, these would be their best friends the rest of their life. Coming up, more of the Wired X Halftime Report after this. Okay. About it. That was impressive as we take a look at this week's FCS poll. Eastern Washington continues to be the number one ranked team in the nation. That's followed by Georgia Southern. The Bison from North Dakota State are number three. And there's the Cats sitting at number four. And then, of course, other teams in the Big Sky Conference that are in 
are Northern Arizona sitting at number 13, Cal Poly at number 11. So four teams from the Big Sky Conference all ranked in this week's top 15. And of course, all four of those teams really looking for a spot in the postseason playoffs. Montana State's remaining schedule will be at Sacramento State next week. Home against Portland State and then of course over in Missoula to wrap things up against the Grizz on November 17th. Yeah, no gimmies left there by any means for Montana State. North Dakota, which had such a brutal schedule to start the season, they now will take on, as they come off of this one, Southern Utah next week, and then will be at Northern Colorado. So North Dakota, four up and four down overall in the season. Their inaugural season in the Big Sky Conference. And really in a big hole here, trailing 28 to seven against Montana State. Now, as you remember, Mike, Bobcats the third, so they will get the ball to start the second half. And I'm sure they had a little bit of a chat there in the locker room, said, look, fellas, let's go down, take some time off the clock, pound that ball, get into the end zone and put this game out of reach. Well, Chris, I think this is a, a very big quarter for Montana State because they have not put the foot on the throat of any opponent uh, yet this year. They have had some opportunities uh, with big leagues at halftime. You know, you can see, you remember D Davis comes to mind where, boy, they turned that thing around in a hurry. So I think this is a big test for their focus to see. Right now, they have played a solid game in all three phases, but they need to finish. Zepp Miller will kick things away. Temperature at 44 degrees. And this one is going to drive Gilbert into the end zone. He's going to bring it out. Gilbert at the 10 to the 15, Gilbert to the 20, still on his feet, breaking tackles, now spins back the other way. Bill, that was interesting, but the end result is he's pinned inside his 20 yard line. Yeah, and uh, boy, that was a dangerous, dangerous move that time because not only was he driven deep in the end zone, but he actually caught that ball going backwards. So uh, a pretty good effort to get it up to the 20, but uh, he's gonna probably cost Montana State five yards on that one. <laughs> Yeah, laughing at him over there. I think he thought, after he caught it, I think he thought about downing it, but then it was too late. And so he got it out close to yeah, the 20-yard line. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in that decision. Well, I guess for me it would be easy because I wouldn't be able to catch it, so I wouldn't get the opportunity <laughs> to down it. Spoken like a true linebacker. Bobcats will stay on the ground to open the third quarter as Cody Kirk takes it over the left side. And I'm not so sure we won't see a steady diet of this Montana State ground attack here in the second half. Yeah, I think that there's a good chance that they will try and, as you said, burn clock and gain yards. But at that time, number 98, Ross Brenneman, another player who's been out with an injury and back this week, does a nice job of wrapping Cody up near the line of scrimmage. Second and nine, McGee fires out here for Ellis, who makes the catch up over the 30. Falls forward to the 35 and a first down for Montana State. Mike, are you surprised at the, the, the lack of offense from North Dakota today? In, in lieu of what they did last week? Uh, uh, honestly, no. Uh, yeah. I thought that Montana State would be able to come out and pressure the quarterback with their front four and uh, really force him to do some things that, or do things sooner than he was accustomed to. Uh, I guess the question was if they'd be able to consistently cover in the back end, and, and they have. And another good run by Cody, or Boy. yeah, Cody Kirk is closing in on 100 yards today. Yeah, he gets right on, goes off the butt of a Renz, or excuse me, of Trey Robinson that time for a nice pickup. Cats stay on the ground, Kirk, big holes. Cody slams up over midfield to the 48 yard line and they are just absolutely dismantling this North Dakota defense. Well, that three man front gives you a little bit different look mm -hmm. uh, because you are gonna have some gaps and some space to work in, but uh, so far, uh, the offensive line for Montana State has just really did an outstanding job. Well, and you get up there and try to stop the run, and then you got to contend with the Cats passing game as they hook up with Ellis on a little slant pattern. And Montana State's been very sharp today. No penalties, good execution, very sharp. I think the week off did them good. Yeah, no turnovers. All the all the things where they've really been struggling the last couple of weeks is, uh, you know, is turning the ball over and the penalties. Obviously, this is a team that is pretty disciplined, but comes in as the second most penalized team in the Big Sky, Chris, and that's just something that they need to clear up and uh, and improve upon if they want to be one of those elite teams that you see at the top of those standings we had up earlier. Give us to Kirk, and again. Good running there, gain of four, brings up second and six here early in the third quarter. 
Here's McGee. Fires out there for, tended for Bleskin. Good coverage that time. Incomplete pass will bring up third down. That was good coverage. The, the one time today, this ball just comes up. That, that's a tough throw to that, that long out out there. Uh, just not quite enough on that one. So third and six for Montana State, kind of driving into that teeth of that wind right now. You see the numbers on Bleskin, four for 60. Four receivers now for McGee on third down. Denarius looks across the middle and has a completion at the 25. And that is complete to Cruz Seawing, and he's got a first down inside the 20. Boy, Denarius McGee does a nice job with his eyes. He looks down this left side where they had a three full streaks going, comes back to the backside, delivers that ball perfectly right in front of Sea Wing and another first down for Montana State. Sea Wing with three catches this afternoon. Here's Kirk who slams up inside and that's close to another first down just inside the 10. Will bring up second and one. Well, another big hole. Look as you see the pole. Then Trey yep. Robinson leads that thing up. Can't even find anybody to block that time. Uh, but uh, Cody Kirk, uh, another eight yard burst. Second and two. Bobcats opening possession third quarter and just marching down the field. Ball is at the nine yard line. McGee, slant pattern. That was intended there for Flocketter, but incomplete. That'll bring up third down. Just throw him behind yep. Lockheader that time. Uh, looked like they were trying to get that quick slant and just uh, ball wasn't delivered in a, in a fashion that could be catchable, but a good read that time by McGee to check out of that. Got the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside and tried to go make a play. I think the wind maybe had a little something to do with that one. The numbers yeah, on Yeah, you Daenerys can see, I think he's trying to pull that thing down because it is uh, really starting to hum down there at that end of the field. Quarterback keeper as McGee is taken down right at the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. Needs to get to the eight yard line. You'd be very close. Well, are you gonna make a call? Are you gonna commit? Or are you gonna just yeah. leave it at very oh, close? Oh yeah, no, I'll go first down. <laughs> <laughs> right when they started moving, that guy starts well, waving his arm. I, that was, I'm no dummy. <laughs> I, I saw the chains move. I'm calling first down. <laughs> It'll be first and goal from the eight yard line. Very impressive drive for Montana State to open the second half. And they shift Perkins in motion. And McGee now looks looks that way. Now rolls out of the pocket. And he's got some running room at the 10. And now taken out of bounds. As that was closed down quickly. That time, great pursuit by the North Dakota defense. And that was big number 98, Brenneman, who rolled him out of bounds. Yeah, Brenneman is one of their senior leaders that has come back and put a good, solid performance out today. But this time, nowhere to go with the football. McGee breaks it to the outside. He's still looking downfield, but nobody open. And uh, does a nice job, really, to hold on to that one, Chris. We've seen that's the area of the field where he kind of likes to maybe force and try and make a couple things happen that time. Very good decision making. Second down from the nine. Thrown out there, intended for Bleskin. And... McGee just kind of short-armed it, didn't get there. Incomplete pass will bring up yeah, third I think down. It, it was catchable. You see yeah. Bleskin on that one. The ball was a little bit low, but it was catchable. That was one where he just turned his head upfield, uh, was more concerned that, that the mistake that is so often made, what you're going to do after the catch, and you've got to first, first bring the ball in. Third down for Montana State from the nine. McGee rolls right, now looks, throws back the other way, has a man wide open at the five. Touchdown, Montana State. What a well-designed play as they got Lee Perkins out there on the flat, and there was nobody anywhere near him, and he gets the easy touchdown. That's one we haven't seen for a while from Montana State, but this is the thing where they motion every, but everything goes to the right. They have the tight end on the backside that sneaks out here and just plenty of room between him and the nearest defender and he's able to turn that up and goes into the end zone easily. 34 to seven. And Perez on for the extra point. Kick on its way and good. 10.48 to go third quarter. 
Cats up the margin to 35-7. Forward scoring drive for Montana State, 14 plays, 80 yards over four minutes off the clock. And Perkins, the tight end, catching the touchdown pass, 35 to seven now for Montana State. And Mike, I'm beginning to wonder at this point of the game when we might see Marcus Hendrickson, the other quarterback for North Dakota, who of course replaced Hanson when Hanson was injured, if we might not see him here in the second half. Well, you know, they may look for to make a change, Chris, but I, you know, I really do think that uh, their lack of success on offense has not been attributable to uh, poor quarterback play, but you know, sometimes you get a different rhythm. Uh, Hendrickson is obviously the guy they say is a he is a true dual threat. Uh, he can he can run the football, and there's a lot of people that believe that he has a stronger arm than than Hanson. So uh, we very well could get a look at him before this thing is over. Well, he put up some very impressive numbers uh, when he was pitching in relief, over 220 yards of total offense he accounted for. And as you mentioned, he is that dual threat. He can pass and run the football. We'll see. 35-7 our score. 10.48 to go in the third. Cats set to kick it away. A.J. Silva gets his foot into it. And this one comes down to Miller inside the 10. Miller up over the 20 to the 25, falls forward to the 28-yard line. And that's where North Dakota will take over. And again, this is, boy, execution on this play, Mike. You just couldn't do it any better. No, you can just see they they just make everything look like they're going right and then sneak him out under him, and the linebacker realizes it, uh, but too late to go make a play, just too much separation. So North Dakota, UND will trying something here to get this offense jump started as they're on the field for the first time here in the second half the numbers on Hanson 9 of 19 for 104 yards and a touchdown goes right up to the air and that's complete short gain to Blair Townsend junior wide out makes the catch and the gain is to the 32 I think that's a good play call on the part of North Dakota they want to get this quarterback obviously we know what he can do Get him some easy throws, some pitches and catches that, that he can get done and maybe start to feel a little bit more confidence because he was just battered and bruised that first half. Second and five. And this is caught at the 45 and a first down. Galladay, I think, is the on the receiving end of that one. And that's a first down. The gain is up to the 47-yard line. Lockie, you know, they they try and bring Minner steps to the loops to the outside this time, but boy, they do a nice job of pushing him out, keeping uh, that quarterback safe that time. I don't think he got touched for one of the first times today. First down from the 47. Little pitch action to Sutton, and Sutton with a good gain to the 46. Gain of seven on the play will bring up second and three. Watch the big horses from North Dakota up front do a good job of chopping. There's a couple of good chop blocks at the point of attack that time. Uh, the ball turns up in the, you know, really probably their nicest running play of the afternoon. Ashworth in on the tackle, so second and three. North Dakota in more of a hurry up. Oh, here's Schreibice off the corner, brings him down for the sack. Well, oh, geez, that's just great effort. He has been pressuring, pressuring, and gets there again this time. But he just comes up, beats the tackle to the outside, and that's pretty dang good effort when you can reach around, get twisted like that. Uh, Schreibice is having an outstanding yeah. year uh, so far for Montana State. He's had a couple of sacks already today, and he's been close on a whole lot more, Mike, but that time brings him down for a loss, so it's third and eight from the 45. And now, timeout taken by North Dakota, and again. Timeout, University of North Dakota. He'll first use their first. first of the second. Well, we'll keep track of that game. That could be huge. Hanson now out of the gun on third and eight. Looks, now throws, has a man wide open. That's Sutton at the 45. Fights forward, and by the spot, he is going to have the first down by a yard. 
Mitch Sutton does a nice job that time. The, the, the senior running back, they start with both backs in the backfield, one on each flank. They sneak Sutton out. He gets underneath and is able to pick up enough to move the chains for North Dakota and give them a little bit of momentum, Chris. They've got a pretty decent drive going right now. Oh, they've got to come away with points right now. Under nine minutes to go as they'll stay on the ground to Sutton. Good running up over the 40 down to the 36 yard line. But if you look at North Dakota's stats coming in, they look like a very balanced attack. 51%. Uh, passing 49 running but lately has been far skewed from that they have been throwing it 75% of the time so they have a running game if they choose to just stick with it be a hard program for them today being this far down Hanson complete out there to Sutton falls forward to the 30 and that's a first down well Hanson again all kinds of pressure they got him wrapped up but he was able to complete the pass and that'll move the chains as North Dakota will continue the drive, but watch the pressure now by Montana State as Hansen drops back, and you're gonna see Grosselock wrap him up, but he gets yeah, it away. You can see he steps up in the pocket. I mean, he's getting twisted, uh, if not hit on just about every play, but he is delivering the football. Hansen goes across the middle. Great coverage by Grosselock, but an even better catch at the 25-yard line. Well, Jameer Jackson is a big target. 6'3", 233 pounds. He is a redshirt freshman, and coming into today's game has been the most productive freshman receiver in the country. Clock continues to be the enemy of North Dakota. Seven and a half to go in the third. They need points, and they need them in a hurry. Now they shift everyone over to the left side. Miller in the backfield on second and four. Miller gets the call. Flag comes down. Miller will be stopped short. Stopped short of the first down, but we'll see what the flag's all about. A little bit of confusion that time. I think they're going to have a false start. Looked like they were moving on the outside of maybe an hard. Illegal shift. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Goes against Jameer Jackson. So that'll back him up five. Hey, look at that. They have a, a festive crowd today. Huh? The three amigos yeah, are here. Lollapalooza. Well, you just look at the top of your screen. You see the man in the slot is moving as the ball is snapped. Cost him five yards. Going to be second and nine. Ball is back to the 20, 29 yard line and second and nine. Sutton in the backfield. Here's Hanson. Looks, looks. And now it's going to be taken down by number 96, Zach Minner. Boy, we've got to credit the Montana defensive backs for that sack because there was absolutely no one to throw yeah, to. Yeah, watch Minner comes on the loop, and he is paired up with Sutton, the running back, and Sutton is not going to win that battle against 96, a 300-pound man who is very, very athletic. And North Dakota going the wrong way now. It's back to the... 37 yard line, it's third and 17. Hanson, out of the gun on third down. And Hanson fires it out there. I think he's got a free play, completes it to Harden. That's a first down. I think Daly had jumped off sides. Yeah, that Bobcats came a little early on the outside, but uh, North Dakota does a good job sticking with the play and makes a nice completion out there to Harden. It is going to be good enough for first down yardage. Well, I think Hanson knew he had a free play. Encroachment, defense. That pen, number 45, that penalty declined. First down. That's a big, big pickup there on, uh, mm -hmm. they had a lot of way to go. Had been backing themselves up and uh, a nice job by North Dakota in in uh, picking up that first down and keeping this drive alive. They, uh, this is by far the most productive they have looked uh, in today's uh, contest. You can see the hit there. Once again, there's no freebies for Braden Hanson. He made a great play, but he paid for it at the end. Gain is all the way down to the 18 and a first down for North Dakota. They'll stay on the ground. Not much there. Boy, that Montana State defense yep. that time sort of packed the front like they were ready for the run game. You see the backers come up and then watch Bethley come up, fill that run fit, 
and uh, nothing doing. It'll be second, and boy, maybe just less than 10. They spotted at the 17, second and nine. Miller and Sutton in the backfield. Let's see if they look for hard and they're wide out here. Now he fires across the middle. What's the ball? Incomplete pass. Looked like there might have been a catch and a fumble, but they're going to rule incomplete pass. That was the middle linebacker, number two, Naamoyaka Ola, that comes up and just delivers a shot, knocking the ball free and then nearly intercepted by Montana State. Watch number two. The ball's thrown over the middle here, but watch. Naamoyaka Ola comes and just delivers a, a good shot on the receiver, and he's able to, to force that ball free. Intended for Jameer Jackson. And it has been continuous pressure on Hanson today. Let's see what they come with here. Straight up the middle. Hanson's going down. Jody Owens fires across the middle of the sack to the 25. Well, I believe that's the second time today that he has just come. He is blitzing between that in that A gap and is completely unaccounted for by the North Dakota offensive unit. The, the nose goes down, the center goes down, the guard went out, and that's just a free shot. Five sacks well, today uh, by that Montana State front. Five sacks, but how many near sacks, how many hits, how many hurries? They're gonna try a long field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 30-yard line, so this will be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Zeb Miller. Ball down, got plenty of leg, and this one is good right through the uprights. So North Dakota gets on the board, 4.32 to go in the third, 35-10 our score. At the Fireplace Center, we realize it's not one size fits all when it comes to your fireplace and accessories. We offer hundreds of options, like Heat & Glow. Heat & Glow has many fireplace options to fit your needs, whether gas, wood or electric we've got you covered the fireplace center is the region's largest fireplace retailer we offer the finest products professional installers and as always we guarantee to be any competitor's price visit us in the store or online at fireplacecentermontana.com opportunity doesn't knock on just any door sometimes you have to seek it out Opportunity sees possibilities and finds dreams. It helps you say hello to your potential and to your future. First Interstate Bank. That's what opportunity looks like. Teams coming out in the second half and uh, moving the ball that time. Uh, Montana State does a nice job of uh, getting a stop in the red zone and enforcing the field goal for North Dakota. Now that Montana State will certainly take that as they have uh, pretty much chewed up two thirds of this uh, third quarter. And now North Dakota will kick it away. And this will send Johnson to the back of the end zone out of the back and it'll be first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Cody Kirk's had a terrific game, uh, Mike, after coming back from his injury and really played well today. He has, he's got, uh, he's up 20 carries over 101 yards on the afternoon to go with just a couple of touchdowns too, Chris. And how, how much of an advantage is for Denarius McGee in his passing game to get this kind of production from his running game. Well, you can see they really have had that balance today. You've mentioned it several times. Last week against Eastern Washington, they were in or their last game, 52 carries, 70 yards, couldn't get anything going in the ground. So uh, he is a welcome sight for Bobcat fans. Boy, Renzo Davis really twisted up there. Stayed on his feet. There's the numbers on Cody, 20 rushes, as you mentioned, Mike, 101 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Looked like maybe Davis put the ball on the ground, but uh, Montana State says they have it. Indeed, they do. Well, Davis is going to come out of the game uh, hobbling a little mm -hmm. bit. It did look like he got twisted up, as you said. Well, Chris, that's what we're, would, from up here, he got stood up. And, of course, that's the scary part if you're running back. And you got people wrapping up and twisting at your 
bottom of your legs. Yeah. And I think you may have when twisted When someone's got a hole, you can't defend yourself. Uh, it gets a little dangerous. Now we're going to have another flag come in. Illegal substitution offense. Number 14. Still first down. Second down. Yep. You watch Mike on this play. Watch where Davis just gets stood up right, right here after he breaks one time. Now right here, and then you'll see everyone kind of grab and twist and pull. Yeah, and that ball clearly was out. Uh, Montana State luckily to get that thing back. Second and 17 now. It's inside the 18-yard line. Pass is caught out there. Nice catch by Chase Young, his first catch of the afternoon. And that gets a good chunk of that yardage back all the Boy, way out to the 27. Get, it's still going to be about third and eight, but watch Chase Young just sprints up the field like he's on a go right here and then shuts it down. Uh, McGee hits him in perfect timing, and he's able to pick up a good, a good piece of it, but still a long ways to go for Montana State. Three receivers split to the right. Ellis below the screen on third down and eight from the 27. Denarius finds Ellis at the 35, and that is just enough for the first down. He knew right where the first down marker was, got it by a yard. Yeah, that was just great execution on that. Just a little inside, little slant. He works the DB up the field and then turns it in to create the space. And the ball is delivered. It just couldn't be any, any better than that, Chris. Uh, McGee has been sharp. Five catches for Ellis today. And they're going to stay on the ground, and Lorenzo Davis will take it up over the 40-yard line. Well, I guess that answers the question. Uh, if uh, Renzo is okay, quickly coming back in the yep. game is Davis, and, and a nice little pickup there for uh, to make it what's about second and five situation, second and four. Yeah, from the 41. Here's McGee. Fires out here for Ellis, who makes the catch at the 47. And that's enough for another first down. Gain is up to the 48. Well, I know that the, I know that this defense for North Dakota State or North Dakota has struggled, but at some point in this contest, I think you're going to have to come and, and maybe try and put some more pressure, or at least play a little tighter on the edge there, because if you allow those corners to play eight, nine yards off the ball, uh, McGee's just going to take that short out yep. uh, on every play and just slowly chew you up and chew up the clock. Davis Goodhart running up over the left side, picks up two on the play, second and eight. A great story for Renzo Davis, huh? Yeah, he could have I mean, he could have uh, walked away from the program. He had some trouble academically, and they gave him a choice. They said you can sit out a year, go to school, come back if you want, and he did. And he did, and he's having a great year, and he's contributing greatly to this offense. Uh, um, it's a good story, you know. You, you have some problems, and I think he would admit that they were of his own making, but. As you said, Chris, he made a choice. It could have, it would, would have been the easy decision would be to say, well, I'm not going to stick around for a year. I'm, right. I only came here to play football. But, but he did it. He did everything that was asked of him and is now back and, and making huge contributions to this Montana State football well, and, team. And not only did he come back, he didn't come back as the number one tailback. He was the guy his junior year. He came back battling Cody Kirk and Trey Robinson and really had to fight his way for play, for playing time. Now you remember early in the season, he wasn't getting a lot of carries. Now he's earned those back. Yeah, he has. Third and eight for McGee. Now directing traffic, throws out there, hit at the 38 yard line as Gilbert took a big shot, but no flag and that'll bring up fourth down. Ramil Harris, the, the uh, DB, is able to get there on that one. Montana State fans in the Montana State sideline thought he got there a little bit early. Let's look at it here. McGee comes out, as you said, directing traffic, sees his receiver, and... Well, I don't know. Uh, she was pretty close. Pretty close. Ball and defensive back arriving right at the same time. So here's something we haven't seen much of today. Montana back in punt formation, and that's going to be Trevor Bolton. Well, Bolton usually comes in yeah. and they're going to go with that rugby style kick. Oh, he this time off. it's going to fake and he has got yep. tons and tons of open field in front of him. Wow, Trevor Bolton, there was no way he was not going to pick up the first down. Absolutely all alone. Well, this thing, this is clearly something that they've seen on film because you don't necessarily do that in this situation, but they, uh, everybody caved in on the corner. Uh, and a good job by Bolton that time. 
You know, that's one of the plan, that advantage that that rugby style kick gives you because you're yep. going to start to run normally. That time uh, he just didn't stop. Well, he's getting a lot of high fives over there. Just a freshman from Great Falls. And Bolton gives the Cats a first down under a minute to go here in the third. Here's Davis. Shakes his way to the outside, down inside the 20 to the 18. And that's a big gainer on the play. Give him nine on the play, second and one. Well, kind of starting to gas that defensive front at this point. Uh, some, some bigger plays in the run game. Uh, really, the yards are really starting to add up. 232 on the ground already for Montana State. First down for Lorenzo Davis inside the 15 to the 14. That could be the final play here in the third quarter. So the Bobcats continuing to use clock here in the second half, content to just ground the ball, use the clock, scored a touchdown midway through the third and knocking on the door again as Montana State will let the clock expire here in the third. Big ovation from this crowd for the effort today. Coach Ash and his team leading 35 to 10 at the end of three. There's the numbers for Montana State. This is just in the third quarter alone, 146. Direct snap to Cody Kirk. And Cody takes it down to the 10 yard line. Well, we talked about it at the break, Chris. Pretty tough for a team that's down 28 to seven at halftime to get back in the ball game when they were limited to one possession in the third quarter. Yeah, looked over uh, to the left of us and got a big thumbs up from Sonny Holland, the former coach of Montana State. He certainly likes what he sees today. And you know, Rob Ash is kind of knocking on his door for all time wins, isn't he? He's moving up fast and I think uh, destined to be there. But uh, the contribution is we see Cody roll this thing in the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown wow. number three for number 25. It's just a, that's, that's just pure effort. He yeah. gets good block, but just a gutsy run on the outside. He bounces this thing once, twice. Just, he's not going down wow. because there's a big piece of blue carpet in front of him that he's bound and determined to get to. Well, you, you've heard the phrase, a nose for the end zone, and uh, Cody Kirk certainly has that as the Bobcats now breaking this one open at 41 to 10 pending the extra point Perez on opening play here in the fourth quarter kick is up and good 14 23 to go in this one all Montana State at 42 to 10 back after these words from your local stations you're watching Big Sky Game Day What would you do with an extra $5,000? Take a in a 10 yard touchdown run by Cody Kirk to make it 42 to 10. Now, Rob Ash got to be a happy coach right now. Has seen his team come back and completely dominate this game this afternoon. That kick drives Miller out of the end zone. First and 10 from the 25. Jeff? Hey, Chris. Well, earlier this week, we talked to defensive coordinator Jamie Marshall, and we asked him, how come we don't blitz much? And he says, well, we do what we do, and that's the base defense. Chris, his group has only allowed one offensive touchdown today against North Dakota, and only one offensive touchdown two weeks ago against Eastern. They're playing lights out, Chris. Yeah, they are, Jeff. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know, guys like Schreibeis, Owens, Minter, it's been a collective effort putting pressure on Hanson, and he really has not been comfortable back there all day. No, and I think that has been the difference is that they have gotten pressure on him, and he's never been able to establish a rhythm, and here uh -huh. we go again. This time the ball is going to come free after the hit by Schreibeis and Daly. Just wiped him out at the 20-yard line. That's the old joke with the defensive end say, uh, Chris, I'll meet you at the quarterback. Watch both of these guys come upfield, just speed rush, yep. beat their men from the outside. And uh, once again, as we get another look, that time it's Daly that makes the first contact, but that's just, just pure speed, speed. Yeah. getting upfield on the outside. A defense is so quick. That's the sixth sack on Hanson this afternoon. Loss of four, second and 14 from the 21. And now more pressure, and he's going down again. 
back at the 15 yard line. Well, it looks like that, that big was, now. was Brian Bendo who's coming in. He's, you know, he's coming back from the injury, has been hurt, but watch him get the push here. Closes down from the outside and just forces him. There's nowhere to go for, for Braden Hansen as much as he'd like to dance around. There's just no gap to, uh, to get through. And those guys have got their ears oh, pinned back right now, Chris. Run yeah. is not a threat to them, so they are working upfield as fast as possible. Third and 20 from the 15. Hansen pressured again and going down again at the 15 yard line. Well, he does look like he did get that one over the line of scrimmage, so that's not going to count uh, in the stats as a sack, but but he looked, watch Hanson on this one, he almost seems like he's he's standing there at the end of this sort of waiting to get hit because he knows it's coming, kind of leaning on the back of his offensive lineman and just, it, that guy, I, I tell you what, he is uh, giving a courageous effort to North, for North Dakota today. Cameron's got to kick into a stiff win and that is a beauty. All the way back to the 35 yard line. Boy. Nice job by David Dash, the backup wide receiver. Boy, Dash looked like he may have turned that one up field, ran into his own player right there at the end. You've seen the false attacks on Rick Hill, but here's the part they cut out. We do not. Montana State back out with the football, 12-15 to go in the fourth. Numbers on McGee, 258 yards and two touchdowns to give us to Cody Kirk. And Cody, a gain of 10 and then some. Down to the 46-yard line, and that's another first down. Boy, again, a nice job up front by that offensive line. Look at him getting a hat on a hat. A nice seam for Cody to get through. Then it's just uh, whether those linebackers and safeties can bring him down. And on that occasion, it took a few of them. Kirk again, this time cuts back up inside, has all kinds of running room down inside the 40 to the 34 and another first down. Boy, this is just impressive, really. Both sides of the football, Mike. Yeah, it is, and, it, and, and it's special teams, there hasn't been a disaster. They had a couple of close calls, but this is a complete football game so far by Montana State, and I'll tell you what, Bobcat fans are happy to see 25 back on the field. First down from the 34. Kirk, this time's gonna be wrapped up right at the line of screen. No, I'll take that back, spoke too soon. Kirk to the 20, 15. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing, Chris. As you said, oh, he was, we, had, he was we had him down, but there is no quit in number 25. Look at him, good block, but this time he does this on his own. He's got Nelson there, add him on the line of scrimmage, a third defender, but that is not enough. Gets that thing into the secondary and Montana State is in the red zone one more time. First down from the 14. Trey Robinson now in the backfield and he gets the call. And Trey slams up inside of the 10 yard line. He picks up five on the play. Looks like there's a North Dakota defender down on the field. They don't have a number, but uh, looks like it, it is we can see the three, but I'm uh, 34. This is going to be Finley. Uh, Cordero Finley, their linebacker. So an official timeout on the field at 10:53. We'll step aside and hear from these words from your local stations. Billings' largest family trade show is back. Mark your calendars for the Family Life Expo, Saturday, February 2nd at Metro Park. Kids will enjoy lots of fun activities while adults visit with family experts on everything from childbirth to retirement. Observe as Dino Lab excavates the remains of a real dinosaur. And don't forget to get entered into the Walt Disney World Sweepstakes. Admission is free. Family Life Expo, Metro Park Pavilion, Saturday, February 2nd. In partnership with Color 8 Television, sponsored by Billings Clinic, Simply Family Magazine, and Connoisseur Media. Grand Avenue Dental Care is excited to introduce a new doctor to our practice. I've served the Montana and Wyoming community for 35 years, and I'm pleased to announce my partner to the practice, Dr. Nathan Tanner. Dr. Tripp and I have the same philosophy on providing the best care possible for our patients. I've been in practice for over 12 years, and I'm honored to be able to join the Grand Avenue Dental Care team. 
If you have a dental need that is long overdue, give us a call today. Don't let fear get in the way. Call Grand Avenue Dental Care today. Only Polaris delivers the ultimate combination of power, suspension, and agility. The only trail-capable side-by-side, Ranger Razor. The only sport performance side-by-side, -side, Razor S. The only four-seat sport, Razor 4. And the only extreme performance side-by-side, -side, the 88 horsepower, Razor XP. Hello, this is Todd from Yellowstone Polaris. Check out the Fritzy Nickel each Thursday for our monthly program and our weekly special. You're watching Cover 8. Second and six for Montana State. Robinson in the backfield. Trey gets the call. Steps up inside of the five, close to a first down. I think he's going to be about a spot at the five, just a little bit short. So it is going to be a third down situation. But boy, Chris, there's some, uh, we got some changes going on in the big sky today. No question. Southern Utah is up into the number one ranked team in the country, Eastern Washington, 30 to 27. And we think that Northern Colorado game has gone final. We'll let you know, but 10 9 at last report late in the game, third and one from the five. Here's Robinson. Got the first down, falls forward just short of the goal line. So a fresh set of downs for Montana State. And this is going to be a very interesting day in the Big Sky Conference, Mike. Yeah, watch the finish here, Chris, as Trey Robinson just drives and he is pumping those legs and they just gets that thing done. Almost gets it in, just comes up a little bit short. So he takes it down to the two yard line. First and goal from the two as we're inside 10 minutes to go in this one. Well, Chris, I tell you, as you look at the undefeated teams, one has fallen for sure. Looks like another one is on the ropes. Cal Poly may be a little bit worried to kick it off tonight. Yeah, here's McGee. Pass and catch to Ellis. Touchdown. Boy, that was too easy. Ellis all alone on a little slant there in the end zone. Scores. Well, when you've been feeding them a steady diet of run, 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 and then see Cody Kirk come back in the game, you've got to believe that they're going to run the football, but Ellis just beats the, the coverage there on a quick slant to the inside. A touchdown for John Ellis. So Perez on for the extra point. And it's good, 49 to 10 at 9.45 to go in the fourth. Okay, sports fans, put your game face on. It's the Built Ford Tough Sales Event. Taking the field, Ford Super Duty. Best in class torque and horsepower. That's how you crush the competition. And best in class maximum towing and fuel economy. It racks up major yardage, pal. F-Series is America's MVP. 35 years straight. Touchdown, baby. Now get up to $7,600 in total savings on Super Duty with zero for 60 plus 1,000 cash. Ford scoring, drive seven plays, 59 yards. McGee to Ellis on the two-yard touchdown, upping the lead to 49 to 10. Have learned that uh, Northern Arizona has come back to beat Northern Colorado 12 to 10, got a late field goal. So they will stay unbeaten in the big sky. Eastern Washington has lost. This has come down to Miller, and Miller up to the 20, still on his feet to the 25 to the 30. Good return by Jake Miller, North Dakota with the football. As we are inside 10 minutes to go. Interesting day in the big sky. I think you're right too, Mike. I think uh, Cal Poly very much could lose tonight to Sacramento State. Hornets, very good football team. Yeah, they are. And I think that's what it shows you that, that it, it's looked like the big sky has started, started to separate itself, but there's still teams like Northern Colorado is in the bottom half of that that are given uh, those top teams everything that they want. And here we see Marcus Hendrickson in at quarterback now. He's had plenty of game experience, a little more mobile than Hanson. So Hendrickson calls his own number right away on a quarterback draw, takes it up to the 35 and a gain of five. Hendrickson comes in before Hanson replaced him with over 220 yards of total offense. His numbers 89 of 157, 15 touchdowns. So clearly uh, he's a guy that uh, very athletic, 
can get it well, done. And you can see just from the initial play call, that was a play that was not going to be called uh, with uh, Braden in there because he just did not the ability to run the ball with the injury and probably the skill set is just vastly different between these two guys, but he can still throw it. Oh, what a great tackle there. Nothing doing. Hit in the backfield. That's Michael Foster. Foster does a great job of sniffing this thing out. And watch him as he steps, steps. That's not a blitz. That's just committing to your read and getting upfield for the, the tackle for loss. The rushing standpoint today, it has been tough sledding uh, for North Dakota. They are 20 carries now, Chris, for seven yards. And a whole lot of substitutions in that Montana State defense, and they continue to bring it. Third and 10 from the 30. Hendrickson up under center. Now rolls out. Looks like a broken play. And now fires incomplete, intended for Galladay, and that brings up fourth down. Now just nothing went right on that play. No, but I'll tell you what, you can certainly see just in these, this quick what is going to amount to a three and out for North Dakota. You can see that this quarterback uh, in Henderson has got some speed that time, able to get that thing to the outside, not able to complete the football, but uh, looks like a, a really a different offense under him. Cameron into punt, dashes back to receive inside his 30. Dash has some running room up over the 30, taken down right there. Montana State with the football, eight minutes to go fourth quarter. Cats well on their way to picking up the win here and moving forward. And as we move forward, Mike, and we look at Montana State and their positioning and, and uh, what they have left in the schedule, they're, they're set up pretty good right now. Well, they are, but I, I still think that in the big sky, well, we were down there a couple years ago in Sacramento where they'll oh be gosh. headed next week. And they are no gimmies as we see uh, now Jake Pleskin is going to come uh, get a chance to, to run this offense for Montana State. But, yeah, they've got to continue to, to play hard every weekend and, and win out, and then they will be in a very good situation. Pleskin in at quarterback. Straight handoff to Johnson, and Johnson inside the 50. That's a big run for Johnson. Now he doesn't get a whole lot of carries because he's got too many guys in front of him. Yeah, that he's, are, that he's, are, uh, he's a great player behind a bunch of great yeah. players. But look at him here as he watch the acceleration as he finds that that seam and then just pushes it up field, almost breaks this thing. The last tackler is able to to take him down. But yeah, he's you know it's the fourth quarter. You're up a ton, but these kids, this is when they want their shots too. Oh, look at this. Johnson's got some room. Breaks a tackle at the 40. Johnson inside the 35. Yeah, I remember that game a couple years ago. We were down at Sac State. Huge lead for Montana State. Sacramento State came Number out, and all of a sudden, we get to this. Came off. It's, it's, it. the next play. it's a Donnie Brook for the second <laughs> half, where we kind of thought, the 60s, it was, right? thought it was over. It turned into a basketball score. Uh, with uh, both teams just leaving it all on the field and uh, just a great football game from an effort standpoint. I can remember getting back on the plane and uh, one of the parents <laughs> saying to uh, defense coordinator Jamie Marshall, hey, great game coach. And he said, yeah, we only gave up 60. <laughs> and here's Johnson again down to the 15 yard line. Yeah, he wasn't real pleased with his team's defense. I remember that comment and I think it was that day it was about 115 degrees down on the field. Well, watch the speed and quickness of Sean Johnson as he finds these seams and able to work it upfield. Shows a little power there, breaking a tackle. It's a little bit of push on the sideline, but boy, this drive has been all about number 33. Yeah, it's the Sean Johnson show, and he's going to get it again. This time tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. That's good to get in a game like this. The value for Montana State, you're going to get a lot of uh, second third string guys that are going to get in and get some playing time and you never know when they're going to be called on right because it can change so fast as we've seen injuries uh, we've seen running wicks uh, go down both Davis has missed time uh, already this fall as well as Cody Kirk so this is a guy you need to be ready and he sure looks like he was today but that time uh, nothing doing in a nice play uh, by number 58 Garrett ring Renecki. so Jake Bleskin in at quarterback the younger brother of Tanner Bleskin Two outstanding players, great falls. Watch this one, they're just good. No, not a seam there, and uh, 
linebacker comes up and finishes that off. That time, a great job by the front for North Dakota. Renzo Davis back in the lineup, tripped up. Takes it down inside the, just inside the 20 yard line. Well, I think that one is, they're gonna come up short, it's gonna be fourth down. It looks like uh, Rory Perez is gonna come on yep. and see if he can put three on the board for Montana State. Ball will be at the 27, so that's this 37-yard field the goal. Fourth attempt. possession of Montana in the second half, and the first time that they've had to settle for less than seven points. So Perez, with a look from 37, got the leg on it, but looks like he shanks it wide right, so no good. And North Dakota will take over at the 5:35 mark. It's been a, it's a very interesting year in the Big Sky Conference. With all the new teams in there, the new look of the of the conference with 13 teams, and there's there's changes this year. Mo Montana struggling in Missoula, that's been a big change. A team like Cal Poly, that's been a, a pleasant surprise. Teams like Southern Utah that have come in and won some big games as they did today. So, the whole the whole look of the conference, the way it's played out, has been has been a much different this year. Yeah, the new teams have, I think have really provided a completely different chemistry in in much larger way than I would have uh, imagined. In just that, you know, we're four weeks away and, and people are trying to figure out the tiebreaker situation. The league's got to come yeah, up and yeah. and uh, clarify the tiebreaking process. And it looks like it could easily come down to the automatic get bid going to a. Uh, a surrogate rate a surrogate rating thing where you're the fourth criteria of the tiebreaker so it is it's I think it's created a lot of excitement I wasn't a big fan of the fact that you that it, with the not having that round robin formula where you, everybody got a shot at everybody but I do think the the level of excitement and just you know it's it's energized the conference no question I I couldn't agree with you more and it's been fun to watch these new teams come into the league and compete and compete very, very well. And that one's almost intercepted. They're kind of ping-ponged off of Galladay. Well, Hendrickson looked like he was gonna run the ball, but he was looking outside to Galladay. Galladay, I think, thought that he was gonna run the ball as well and wasn't expecting that one. Actually, you watch as you... <laughs> Hendrickson will break the pocket here, but he's still looking to throw it. Galladay thinks he's gonna run it. He just kind of threw that one at him. I also, I'd like to, you know, you see teams that are ranked, but I also would be interested to see how the conferences stack up across the country as you get closer and closer towards the playoffs. What is the premier conference in the FCS right now? You can make a case for a lot of them, I suppose. Hendrickson's going to go down here. The Missouri oh. Valley, of course, with North Dakota State, that's an unbelievable conference with Northern Iowa in there and Southern Illinois. and The Colonial Athletic, I mean, they are just... Uh, yeah, there's a bunch out there, and I wasn't really sure that, that uh, they talked about from the league standpoint that, hey, bringing these these extra teams in was going to give us some more fire, to give us some more credibility on the national stage. I don't know that I really believe that, yeah. uh, but I truly am a believer uh, early on in this first season. Dash is going to let this one hit and roll down all the way inside the 35 yard line to the 32 with 410 to go here in the fourth. Kenya asked our student group to join them in bringing clean water to their schools. We are the Montana State University chapter of Engineers Without Borders. We use what we learn in our own classrooms to cross boundaries and create solutions. At Montana State University, we work together. We change lives. 
Cascade Ice. Live free, drink freely. Our zero-calorie sparkling water with juice is not only sugar-free, sodium-free, and caffeine-free, it's guilt-free. A crisp, refreshing sparkling water with juice that's healthy, without compromise. With 22 flavors, drinking Cascade Ice means you can feel free to pick a favorite or try something new. And no matter what you choose, Cascade Ice will always be zero calories. Available at most stores in Montana. Cascade Ice. Drink freely. Hey, Chris. Well, Daenerys McGee has not thrown an interception all day. It's only the second time all season he hasn't thrown a pick. Now, all the talk coming into this game was how good North Dakota's offense was, how effective they were. 600 yards passing last week against Montana. Well, Daenerys McGee has certainly done work today, Chris. Oh, no question. And look at those numbers, 24-32. Bleskin in relief as Davis continues to get work. Runs out of bounds at the 36-yard line. A great day for Sean Johnson, who, you know, known for special teams, Mike, but today really got involved in the offense. Boy, he got it going early. This is the first score of the game where he brings it up the sideline, gets Montana State on the board, starts that offensive rhythm going. Now that he's getting some more action here in the fourth quarter, he just made some great runs, finding that seam, and, and really gives a nice burst to that second level. He's just telling Coach, get me in there. Give me some plays. <laughs> he's had a good day today. And Davis with some good running to the 45, and here he goes, Lorenzo Davis. One man to beat for the touchdown and tripped up inside the 40. And that's another first down. You know, you talk about guys that have had big days. We could name a ton, we could name a whole bunch of them. Well, I think this one is gonna put Montana State second back as you watch just make some nice moves and then just to burst his feet. And it is just a shoestring tackle that saves that one from getting to the end zone. But Montana State, Rushing 58 carries, 399 yards. Cody Kirk, 160. Lorenzo Davis, 126. Johnson, 50 of his own. Denarius got 27. And don't forget, Trevor Bolton got 23 on his fake punt. That's right. And Davis continues to take time off the football. Well, Montana State, of course, will improve to six and one on the season with their win today or seven and one rather six and one in the big sky conference as we get down to the final month of the regular season cats still with a couple of big games and of course the one in missoula to wrap it all up that could have implications as far as seeding goes in the playoffs for the cats well it's gonna have huge implications as it always does but <laughs> in the last few years it's always you know it's had playoff implications for both and teams conference and for the conference championship uh, Missoula's had a little bit of a rough patch this year but they would like nothing better to salvage their season with a win against Montana State and here's Johnson refusing to go down and he's up inside the 20 yard line North Dakota will try to reset after this loss here in Bozeman today. It's kind of been tough sledding for the group from Grand Forks. Well, Johnson just showing that he can find a seam here. He just fishing his way up through that offensive line and then <laughs> does a little ankle breaker on the DB there and uh, out of bounds at the 12 yard line. There you see the numbers on Johnson, six for 78 and a touchdown is down to the final two minutes of this game. This will be our final game. Max Media across Montana, certainly been fun. Again, as always, working with you, Mike, and of course, our great team that uh, comes each and every week. Here's Davis, better wrap him up. Davis is gonna stretch for the end zone, he's in. Lorenzo Davis, six more for Montana State. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the, the Montana State sideline was very slow at getting those last few plays in. Uh, I don't really think that they wanted to uh, attack another no. one on here, but you can't tell your players to quit playing hard. But this, watch at the end of this, when he gets it outside, he believes in his speed and he stretches this thing to the sideline, trying to beat them uh, so that he knows that if he gets it, then he can turn it up, go vertical, and get it in the end zone. Six more for the Cats. Perez on for the extra point block. And this one's coming all the way back. 
unless Saluska can run him down or Perez. Nope. Well, we do have a flag yep. back at the 20 yard line. But if I guess if there's there's been any negative or anything uh, disappointing from a Montana State standpoint, it might be that the fact that that Rory Perez came out and missed his his second field goal uh, going back to, to the Eastern Washington game. And then uh, obviously that uh, point after touchdown did not go the way that Montana State would have liked. Chris Brown is the one that returned it all the way, but we'll see what the flag's all about back at the 20 yard line. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 29 of the re receiving team. That penalty will offset the score. No score. Did you get that figured out? Well, I I felt his pain, Chris, <laughs> because sometimes those words just they get so big inside it's you can't cold. get them out. And it's I cold. I go through it every week, so uh, I uh, have a lot of sympathy. But that one looked like it was hard to get out, and I still don't know if uh, if uh, that just negates the score. But the play is dead. All right, let's revisit the scoring here in the second half. Starting out with the, ah, this was a great play. The throwback to Perkins, everyone went right. They threw it back and he scored. And then North Dakota got a steady diet of Cody Kirk here in the third quarter. Yeah, Cody pushing that one in for touchdown number three. Then just a little slant route to Ellis. And this is a Lorenzo Davis getting his action too. And uh, there has been uh, plenty of offense for Montana State. Minute 46 to go as we look at the last Ford scoring drive for Montana State. Five plays, 68 yards. Touchdown by Arenzo Davis. What a fun afternoon for Bobcat fans as they file out. What, just one more home game for Montana That's State? That's right, down on the road next week to Sac State and then back to Bozeman one more time for uh, Portland State before going on the road to Missoula. Obviously, Bobcat fans hopeful that uh, their performance this year was going to earn them some uh, home playoff action, but uh, a lot of football to be played before that can be determined. Be interesting to see the shakeup in the FCS poll. Georgia Southern, no doubt, takes over the top spot. The Cats figure to move up at least one, depending on what the other teams do. Well, that's a souvenir out there in a funny Holland end zone. Yeah, the field goal is. Oh, the Rocky Mountain Bank play of the game. Oh yeah, the fake punt on fourth down, Trevor Bolton. Well, that was just yep. a well-designed play that they obviously executed very well, uh, picking up some big yardage. Uh, we thought they were they're going to have to come out and punt for only the third time. It ends up it's just going to be two, but they're just really an all-around great day for uh, Montana State football. And they they responded to a, a, a big opponent and they came out in the second half and kept the pressure on. And North Dakota will just run out the clock here is down to the final couple of plays and now Montana State did a really impressive effort after falling here at Eastern Washington a couple of weeks ago we checked the Big Sky scoreboard and Southern Utah with the stunner today in Cedar City beating Eastern Washington 30 to 27. Northern Arizona just holds off Northern Colorado. Montana was an angry football team apparently as they put up 70 against Idaho State. Grizz will be back in a bit of a reset year with all of the problems that they've had uh, during the off season and the coaching changes and maybe took more of a toll than people would think. But uh, they got a lot of good young players on that team. The redshirt freshman quarterback Trent McKinney. We saw Shea Smithwick hand in last week's game, a young man out of uh, Kalispell and they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine and been, yeah, they've had a lot of off field distractions, but what people forget is that they graduated uh, a group of defenders, Chris, it was probably as good as there has been in the big sky for a long, long time, uh, and maybe ever. So when you have to replace that many good players, you're going to have some growing pains. And, and yeah, some of the other stuff is factored in as well. But yeah, it's still a very strong program. 
they uh, can uh, term that maybe as a reset year for them as they look to uh, get things back on the right track. We also have to um, also have to wonder about the the NCAA possible NCAA sanctions. Those haven't been ruled on. A big shout out to the quarterback club and Baja Fresh. Everyone gets fed on our crew by those guys except us. So I don't know why we have to give them the props, but I guess they got to guess that Baja Fresh is pretty good eats down there. It certainly sounds like it. <laughs> I'd like to have a little bit more personal knowledge. <laughs> the dash will field it at the 25. Good return. Stays in bounds. Well, we get got an opportunity to see a lot of Montana State players. David Dash is someone that they thought was going to be an exciting player for Montana State at some point. Started out at running back, kind of got moved out by, again, a, just a great group of athletes. But, boy, I think he's shown today just a little the little bit that we've been able to see him that uh, he's going to get some things done and is going to make some plays for Montana State as they go through this Big Sky Conference stretch. Luskin will take a knee to officially end this one. And that'll do it. 55 to 10, the final score. Big win for Montana State as they stay in the thick of this Big Sky Conference chase. And now it gets interesting with the Eagles losing today. Cal Poly with the big game tonight against Sacramento State. So we'll wait and see what happens uh, as it's been a wild Saturday here in the Big Sky. And we'll be back after these words.